my constant starting for my all Want dit is die atmosfeer daar met die band, dat is toch niet overwelming, maar dit is niet.
Reza Hendricks at first slip. So Pamela around the wicket first ball. Just tucked away onto the onside. And that'll be a boundary to start. Lovely way for the unbeaten Dalphabet Warriors to begin. What a first baller. You, you're almost hopeful that as the batting team. Especially losing the toss, you're thinking, oh, there might be something in the pitch that they didn't tell us about. But all of a sudden, you get a little loosener from Sipamla just on the hip and just flicked off nicely. These two sides having played 31 games in T20 cricket. The Lions winning 12, Warriors 17 and one tie as well as one no result. So the game could go either direction. Fuller delivery this time. He just works that onto the onside. There's hard work there in the deep, and I don't think he's going to cut that off. That'll be a boundary. Back to back here. We're just going to wait to see. To me, it looked like it may have uh, touched the cushion there. Yeah, Mitchell von Buren down there in the deep. Yeah, lucky to get away with that one. I think it was one of those uh, touch and go ones. We might have just touched the cushion, just pushed the ball away as he touched the cushion. Those 50-50 uh, calls. You can just see Rasi van der Dusen there on the screen, just uh, asking where exactly they want him. Get the angles correct now for the right-handed Brietzka. These two sides at the Wanderers. The Warriors having played seven games here and only won twice. With 81% chance of winning if you bat second here. The statistics could favor the home side. But as they set off for a quick one there, you cannot write off this Dalphabet Warriors side. They've been just so good and really off uh, the foundation set by their bowlers in this tournament. Sia Simetu has just been a revelation. Everyone's asking where does he come from? What did he do? Where, what, what, where has this guy been? And he has been a revelation. But also one thing we noticed and we just saw it there from Matthew Brietzko as well, the running between the wickets from the Warriors has been fantastic throughout the season. They've probably had the least dots of all the teams. They're already eight from the over halfway. Again, just onto the hip there. This time Mureki does the cleanup work there. Spamla just struggling with his line around the wicket. Might be a good idea just to have one over the wicket at the left handed, just Go get it across, him. yeah. And if he gets the ball to move back into that left hander, all of a sudden the inside edge on the stumps come into play. Average day night score here 157 at the DP World Wonders. Now Matthew Brietzka has his second opportunity. And just catches the outside half of the bat. Temba Bavuma cleaning that one up. National contracts coming out this week and uh, some interesting selections but also uh, not unwarranted guys mm. that have put performances in time and again and now finally being rewarded. A guy like Ryan Rickleton we can mention he has been rewarded and also one of the surprises as well that's uh, not received their contracts this year and also asked for no contracts. A little bit of a way shape there, and you mentioned uh, two, two of them uh, 
not in that mix is uh, David Benningham as well as Carl Verena and no, most notably Anrich Nokia at the end of one it is nine without loss so Anrich Nokia electing not to take up a contract yeah I think that back injury we all know how serious it was um, it has kept him out of the game for so long and he just wants to nurse it I think for the next 12 months or so just to make sure that he's ready for that 2027 World Cup because he's missed so many World Cups in his career that he actually just want to get ready for that World Cup yeah it's, it's a tough one for him he's, he's also had a, a new child so congratulations to him and Michaela on, on, the, on the birth of their child but it's those types of things you have to kind of take into perspective and, and make sure that you can elongate your career. Vian Mulder will be bowling from the caller drive end, offering a little bit of swing with the new ball. Javesh and Pile will face up. He comes around the wicket and picked up on its way. One bounce and a second, and that'll be four. Great little shot there from Javesh and Pile. Javesh and Pile has received two of those now in. Uh as many ball deliveries they're just straying onto his pads and it's very interesting that the uh, Lions decided to go with two seamers up most teams and 90% of T20s these days start off with pace off maybe Fortain would have gotten the first over instead of Mulder but again that around the wicket is just angling into those pads of Pelé and oh he's so those wrists strong flick just so good with that shot and that's wayward from Mulder yeah surprised that uh Either Mureki or Yusuf not uh, getting the new ball. But the Lions obviously having done their homework. Just having a look at the strip, Ger, just talk us through what you're seeing with the alternating colour stripes. Well, as Matthew Brietzka is practicing the pull shop there at the non-strikers, you will see that just outside that off stump for the right hand and leg stump for the left hand, there's a tinge of green. There's almost like a bit of a stripe running through there. Wide again. This is disappointing from Mulder. He'll want to rectify things and, and maybe he'll consider coming across the left handed Pele. And just going back to the pitch, and you'll see Ryan Rickleton there just explaining that we must not bowl there. He's going to have a bit of a flick on it. And there's a bit of a tinge of green on the pitch as well. It might be a little lateral movement while they might have gone with the two seamers straight up, and thus far, not finding the areas. Wayward again. Has he gotten anything? No, there was a shot of catch. But it maybe just taken a tickle through of the pad to Rickleton. So this is slowly becoming quite an expensive over for Vian Mulder. Lucky enough to get away with that last delivery. Strange enough becoming a long over for Vian Mulder. Only two deliveries bold thus far in the second. He comes in again to Pelé. Yeah. Tucked away behind square on the offside. They'll come through for the single. And uh, you just note for the youngsters that when you are bowling right arm around the wicket, you're not going to come tight to the stumps more often than not. You're going to come very wide of the crease to get that angle to, to swing in. And also very important coming around the wicket is there's so much emphasis on the left arm for if you're a right-handed bowler, it needs to be high. So especially for that shoulder not dropping, but if you can keep the chest up as well, especially around the wicket, it just negates that shoulder from falling away and just stops him from falling over and having a more of a slingy action and stay upright. Absolutely. So deep square out on the leg side and third man on the off. So remember, just those two men out allowed in the first six overs. He comes over the wicket now. Just guides that down to Sipamla at third man. And again, you see the landing point there from Mulder. Right arm over, and he wants to be right uh, next to that off stump as he balls to the right-handed Matthew Brietzka. But again, a little bit off target. Brietzka, an easy uh, fiddle just down to third man. And immediately going around the wicket again. With Pile so strong, we can just see that that square leg has gone a little bit finer for that pickup shot. There we go. It's absolutely castled him. What a cork of a delivery. And that's exactly what he would have wanted. That's the line and length that he would have uh, been aiming for. And that's a crucial wicket because Javesh and Pile has been doing very well in this year's CSA T20. 
one of the top five run scorers and the Lions will certainly be pleased with the wicket coming as it has. Yeah, and my apologies for that outburst. I rather enjoy a fast bowling. Me being a uh, little bit of a medium pacer myself, I get excited when the stumps gets uprooted. And that was an absolute jaffer. Wicked time for the Lions. And oh, of all the deliveries they've bowled, the last thing Pelé would have expected was that. Absolutely, absolutely not. Means that Andile Mohakane comes to the wicket. And uh, with this over, having started terribly, Vian Mulder has managed to pull it back ever so slightly with the eight runs in the over but it went wayward very quickly so well i suppose he'll be happy ish with how the over has gone and this is the back end yeah there's becoming a nine ball over at the end of the day so uh, yeah well if you're the captain eight for one i'll take it yeah not too bad in a t20 game he's got one ball left in his first over and that's exactly what the lines would have seen that shape with Vian Mulder, a little bit of extra bounce and the big wicket of Pile. We saw that in the four day game as well in the format, he was swinging it prodigiously at one stage. He was almost a go to guy with a golden arm. Right, last ball. And that's been dropped at fine leg. Tsepo Moreki, it came so quickly to him, just worked away. Mohakane trying to just get off strike and uh, a drop chance there. So at the end of two, it's 18 for one. How costly would that drop catch be at the end of the day? He got off the marks, he got off the dreaded Donald, but it just did not seem comfortable coming forward, going back. Didn't know how good well that was hit or if it's going to carry, and all of a sudden just had to lunge forward and just dropped it out of the palms. Oh, big let off for the Warriors. So Sipamla to continue from the golf course end. And uh, we were talking in the last game about, the last Lions game here, about the bowling stocks for the Lions. And we also mentioned the players that would come in in the event of guys moving away to the IPL. But two guys that I hadn't thought about is... Uh, one Ulifir as well. Outside edge! Oh, and another drop catch! It went so quickly, and that'll trickle away down to the boundary. Clean up work in the end. Don't worry about bowling stocks because they've got it covered here. Two opportunities now, and two that have gone a begging. And I'll tell you what, Riza Hendricks is one of those in the SA20, which was an absolute flyer on this ground as well and oh he nearly did it again that would have been a hell of a catch yeah, just a little bit of a way shape there and uh, being the undoing of matthew Brietzka. this time he survives though absolute gem of a delivery that one pushed on the up and again it's an opportunity this time just falling short of bjorn fortain it's one of those pitches where you almost feel that they're having a look every delivery. There's just something in it. If it's full, it's almost like it's not coming on. If it's back of a length, it's flying off. A little bit too paced. That might have been what the Lions picked up and say, listen, we're going to have a bowl on this deck first. Uh, obviously seeing the value in batting here second, making sure that they're getting things right with the ball in hand. And you almost feel that there's an opportunity in the offing. Pulled away to the onside. Again, a drop catch. Boy, oh boy, that was hit like an absolute tracer bullet. The Lions not able to uh, get anything working for them. That was hammered. The sound of the bat was absolutely flying it. Because that was bullet. You can just see him looking at his hands. If Jan Mulder, very disgusted with himself. But I'll tell you what, high fives with the left hand tonight. That Shit. was a stinger. Crack that one. Uh, Matthew Bretzka hits the ball so hard. Will one eventually stick for the DP World Lions? It's a glorious delivery. 
It's a plumber probably feeling he'll do it himself, then he'll try the Yorker. Nobody wants to uh, <laughs> help. Nobody wants to help me out. <laughs> oh my word! What an eventful over thus far. We've been two balls in and oh, two drops already. It's everything happening at the moment here, DP World Wanderers. Matthew Breska just having a stern word with himself, pulling himself out of maybe a little bit of a mental funk. Him very in deep in his crease. There's no such thing as playing on the back foot there. You just try to guide that and it didn't really go anywhere. Maybe trying to give himself as much room as possible to hit through the line of the ball. Also maybe just trying and seeing if Zapamla will fall for the old trick. Is come a bit fuller, come into my arc so he can maybe, like you said, hit through the line, go through that extra cover that he loves so much. It is a big vacant land there. Extra cover is about five yards. If he walks in, ends up about 10 yards away from the circle. So there is a bit of a gap behind him. Comes down the wicket and he's edged it and he's gone. There's a faint tickle. The lines immediately knew. Bretzka just looked at the umpire, but we could hear the, the edge from up here. So drama early on here for the Dalphabet Warriors. And it looks like the lines might have their number this evening. Yeah, they definitely saw something. Their conditions, the bowling, that first two over, first over from Sapamla, we thought, oh, He's going to have a long evening. All of a sudden, this over has come back. He's had the edge of Bretzka. He's had Bretzka drop that short mid-wicket and finally gets his man. Finally, some luck for the Lions. One in four. Well, if you are a skipper or a coach, you'll take those odds. Every fourth delivery, you're going to get a wicket. So, Mokhrkane now being joined by Jordan Harman. And the youngster has a task ahead of him three overs completed 21 for two and the Lions feel like they might be in here the challenge for the Warriors here is they've done so well in this tournament thus far mm. and, and this could be a turning point you don't want the tournament to slip away from you after being unbeaten so early not that we're guaranteeing a result either no. way but it's something that will be in the back of the minds of the Dalphabet Warriors players. It's not always easy to come to the high felt. Mulder to begin a new over. Mokakane very loud there with the call. Getting nicely behind it as well. Feet are moving nicely for Mokakane. But yeah, this is the thing. You, you know somewhere along the line you're going to have a game where you struggle. And then you hope that the... The other batters will put up their hands and say, listen, let's build a partnership. Because that's the one thing lacking at the moment is those partnerships for the Warriors, which they've always relied on and put them in those winning positions. Just guided this down to third man. They're running hard for the first one. They'll get two in the end. Maybe a bit of a delay off the boundary there, as you can see Mulder with his double teapot, Lutus Pamla. Maybe thinking about his last over. And immediately raising his hands and apologizing. He knows he was on his heels there. Like I said, thinking about that last over. Finally getting a wicket. Is he going to get a third? That's probably what I was thinking about. One more. One more over skip. Give me one more chance. Struck in front, there's a loud appeal, but umpire Kuma walks away, and that's always an indication that he's not interested. Leg buys is the signal. One thing we know about Vian Mulder, he will always be disappointed when he appeals for an LBW. Very passionate man. Well, that just looked high as soon as it struck him. As Herman is going to face up to his first delivery. You can see Mokokane just walking down to the deck, just saying, "Have be very watchful, there is a bit of movement. Something in, in store here, if Mulder can put pressure on the young left-hander. He's going to continue over the wicket, maybe seeking out an op opportunity to take the edge here. And uh, keep your eyes on this game. 
lovely delivery to start. Lovely delivery from Vian Mulder. Seems to be maturing as a cricketer is Vian Mulder. He, he came into domestic cricket at a very young age, and that can be very it can be overwhelming for mm. for a youngster, especially when you, you you there's comparisons between you and and, and another player. You, you almost feel like you have to live up to that, and it puts puts mental pressure on you, and then it can be a difficult thing to perform. I have mentioned it in the past as well, where I think at the moment Vian Mulder is the all-rounder that we need, the all-rounder that we were expecting him to be about three, four years ago. And uh, yeah, the, the mental maturity now as well, he's, he's 26 or turning 27, he's at that age now where he'll be in his prime. So if we're going to capitalize on him as an all-rounder, now is the time to do so. So yeah, he has matured in his game. Lovely stroke, lovely stroke. Just punches this down the ground. There's a chase on here for Evan Jones. He'll get there in the end. Those long limbs helping him out. A great bit of work there from the all-rounder. But this is exactly what the Warriors need to do is hit the gaps. It's a very quick outfield. If it passes a fielder, you will have an opportunity to come back for a second because it's almost running it in instead of just picking it up. And that, that timing just was brilliant. You just try and over hit it, just push it down the ground, take the two, keep the scoreboard ticking. It's exactly what they need. Four gone, 26 for two, and Cody Yusuf getting the opportunity with ball in hand. He's just been somebody for the Lions this season that managed to pick wickets like fruit from a tree at the precise moment that the Lions needed. It's, it's one of those bowlers where it almost takes you back to the to the old ways where the fast bowlers was in your face and we saw in the four day cup he was right up into the grill of the batters this tickles us away to the onside they're running the first one very hard Mohakane looking to put pressure on the Lions fielders and that's how you transfer pressure when you are under pressure good running and good communication can turn ones into twos, twos into threes, and suddenly the game is back on. And also those mental images of the catches going down, the drop catches, all of a sudden there's a thumble in the field. There might be a one or two words exchanged amongst the players. It just creates a bit of a, a bit of a negative vibe on the field. And then a couple of more things goes wrong. Aerial shots goes over the fielders instead of to hand. So you make your own luck in this game. That's exactly what the Warriors need to do. Transfer the pressure. Immediately setting off. Intelligent cricket there. Just opening the face of the blade. Hitting it square and sit on your bat at the other end. It's one of those things that I mentioned earlier as well where it has been a fantastic form of the game for the Warriors is the running between the wickets. They've responded brilliantly to one another as well. Not a lot of run outs in their innings. Um, they respond immediately to calls. They trust one another. Picked up onto the onside. And that'll fall into no man's land. They're going to run for two. And it was a little bit of a slip in the field there. Slip up in the field from Lutus Pamela means they get through without much fuss. Just try to chip that onto the onside that Andila Mohakane. Well, knowing that that man is back at the fence, um, maybe not trying to roll the wrist, create too much pace on the ball. Going for the safer option. Just hit the green. That's wayward from Cody Youssef. He is one of those bowlers where you don't really expect him to keep the runs down, he wants him to take wickets. He's in a very attacking bowler, a very aggressive young man. And it's almost a scenario where you see, you see those little three things in your way, remove them. Absolutely, he's, he's somebody that just doesn't hold back when he runs into ball. That's pitched up. This could be a run out here. Oh, trying to show his football skills. He did it in the end there. Great bit of work from Cody Yusuf. Showing his talent with the feet. Stump went almost further than the ball there. So good kick. I think those Australian rules, you'll see the umpire between the uh, 
<laughs> the, the poles. Appropriate for a cricket ground as well. <laughs> but it was a good bit of awareness there from Herman. And that points to your earlier thoughts around their running. Mm. Just trust is implicit with this Delphabet Warrior side. And the results are showing for it yeah. on the table, having not yet lost a game in this year's CSA T20. Yeah, I was a bit surprised when you mentioned that uh, the average score is 157 on this ground. We always think War uh, Wonder is a bit... Ah! Immediately off for the single. I think you know what has maybe given you a kind of a false sense of, mm. of what score should be is that Lions Rocks game earlier in the season mm. where the Lions put a massive total on the board it was a great bit of work there 2-2-3 two, two, for 5 in that game so that's where they kind of lead you into false sense of security with, with batting scoring yeah, runs but, but the, to your point yeah. yes the, the Wanderers has produced a, a run fests in the past works this square of the wicket on the onside as the band strikes up and that'll be the end of five 34 for two yeah and it, it's it's what you say the, the big scores have come on the wanderers if you think way back in the 438 game was here a couple of the uh, ipl games back in 2010 was here there was a couple of 200s there as well and i mean normally you'll associate wanderers uh, a couple other grounds as well with high scoring matches, high intense matches. Tepo Moreki coming into the bowling attack. He's somebody who's struggled a little bit this year. He's under the pump in that Warriors game. Very expensive for him in that game. Not for 66 in his four overs, but managing to managing to get the win did uh, the DP World Lions. But Having come up from Western Province, he's found his home here at the DP World Wanderers. And he will be bowling to Andile Mohakane. There's a loud shout and Brez, uh, not rather, Brezka Herman had to do a bit of uh, wheel spin there to try and turn. Check the ABS, see how that's going. But it's true what you're saying is, um, there's a high expectation of Marek, especially because he got his uh, green cap at New Zealand as well. So there is a high expectation of him. There's something they see in him. He's a, he's a hustler. He's a bustler. He comes into the crease, hits the deck. He also wears his heart on his sleeve. Oh, my word. What a hurler. That has beaten everything. Good gracious. Well, Tipo Moreki shut me up. <laughs> what a absolute jaffa. What a nut. That was a beauty. Any Anyone who enjoys cricket and enjoys fast bowling, what a beauty. It takes you back to the very first Dale Stain wicket that he took when uh, Michael Vaughan had no idea where the ball was. Hitting that top of all this time, just missing it by a whisker. Another one, another one, another one, another one. Goodness me, Tsepo Moreki. I, uh, I don't know what Andila Mohakani could do right. It's an absolute gem, gem, gem of a delivery. Oh, the first one just left the right hander. The second one cut him in half. You almost feel it's got to be a slower next. <laughs> He's been mixing it up. Well, with deep square out, there might be a shorter delivery in the offing. Third man out on the offside. We're still in power play. Gets bad on ball this time, does Mohakane. Now he can happily sit at the other end and not have to face a rampant Seppo Moreki. Your voice must travel because he heard something and he didn't like it. But I'll tell you what, those two, those three deliveries was brilliant. And even that one just had a bit of a jag back into the right hander as well. And I think that's what's in the mind, maybe, of Mohokani. With that man at deep square, he's waiting for the short ball and he's not coming. It's almost like a double bluff. Just guides this out and they're happy to get through for the one. So, one ball. 
remaining in this over. How would you assess the power play? From where they were after two overs, I think the Warriors will be happy with the recovery. The Lions will be ecstatic with where they, they are at the moment, going at only six to the over. Um, and although those two wickets fell, they were at 8.6 at one stage to the over, the run rate. My word, my word. Tsepo Moreki, what a glorious over. I, nothing more to say, the play speaks for itself. End of six, it's 36 for two. Those two wickets is the thing that will make the Lions very, very happy. And this is kind of the bowler that we expected it to do. And Tepo Mareke came in and he said, hold on, you're praising Cody Yusuf, look at this. And he was just swinging it all over. And what's now, with the score only at 36 after the power play, what's now nice for the Lions is they can actually move the field out and they can restrict those boundaries. And they can allow them to keep carrying on at six and sevens with the ones and twos every now and again. Fine leg, third man and two men out square on both sides of the wicket. Ah! And he plays that into the region. There's a shy at the non-striker's end, but he was too quick for Temba Bavuma. Nearly got a ball on the back there <laughs> with young Harman. Now we all know that uh, Bavuma has got a tendency to throw from weird positions and hit the stumps. He does have that knack. This time just couldn't generate the power for the last to let the ball go. Another man who's got himself a national contract. Mm -hmm. Pakistan, Sri Lanka, the West Indies and possibly Australia towards the end of the year. So a lot of cricket to be played in the back end of 2024. Ah! And that rushed him a little bit. Gloved no. that one down. Rickleton not able to Don't cut it off there. And this is just Cody Yusuf at his best. Just giving it a little bit of extra. You can hear the grunt from where we're sitting. It was just a little bit of something extra in their delivery you just see Harman on the screen just showing that the ball is just kicking off the surface so it makes timing very hard because I, it, you're getting it on the splice of the bat not really the middle and if you force it from there it will only loop up to one of these close infielders just a change in the field the wickets heading out onto the boundary and they keeping everybody else pitched up and driven out into the offside Van Buren does the fielding and they're just happy to go at singles at the moment six to the over it's uh, crucial for them to build that partnership that you mentioned we've got to make sure as uh, Lions batters if this is the conversation I imagine that they would be having we've got to be thinking about how is it that we're going to turn the early fortune of the DP World Lions into our favour here. So, continued change uh, is uh, the mid-wicket boundary being looked after there by Vian Mulder. Short and pulled nicely onto that onside and the aforementioned Vian Mulder just uh, cleaning that one up. Yeah, nice short arm jab there, just making sure that he hits the gap. Did Mokokane. Then try and over hit it and this is now what's making this partnership so impressive is they're not trying to power hit. They're just trying to get themselves out of this little bit of a hole that they're in. Partnership only 19. Ah! Slightly missed time shot. A little bit ill time. Trying to push at that one and a little bit late maybe on that shot. A little bit early rather. Yeah, he's trying to get it past in between those the mid off and the uh, cover region. But again, just showing to Mokokane that it's just kicking off the service from this end. And it's, it's, it might be use of just flicking that wrist through as he goes oh, through this action. Comes, oh my word, that one was straight out of the fruit bowl. What a peach of delivery. Just an in-swinging delivery and not to be outdone by Tsepo Moreki. Great way to end the over. It's seven gone. I'm going to make way for the indomitable Ken Bolin. It is the DP World Lions taking on the Duffelbed Warriors and what a fantastic, fantastic evening it has been. We had a bit of a threat of rain earlier on.
changing personnel, changing seats, always fun. And I always am starstruck when I'm sitting next to Mr. Borland. Welcome. Must be the reflection of my bald head cat. Nothing else could explain that. But it's been a, a very interesting start uh, to this game. A, a bit messy by the lines. Quite a few leg side deliveries. Um, and Dile Mokokane dropped three times in his first three runs. Again, Moreke just starting off and uh, pushing that one past. We've seen this a couple of times going down leg. And it's just giving, just allowing this Warriors partnership of Mokokane and Herman just to settle in. It's not what you want. But what a first over Moreke ball. Beauty and uh, kudos to the man because his last outing, uh, he mm. conceded the record number of runs in a, in a T20 domestic game. Another one just uppishly played. That should have been cut off. Fantastic running. Big call of two from the get-go. And great running there by the uh, two Warriors. They, uh, I think you and David touched on it. The Warriors have a very low dot ball percentage. Very good runners between the wickets. It's boundary percentage, obviously crucial mm -hmm. in T20, but also a low dot ball percentage. Those singles are, are very important as well. Oh, you just mentioned it. There we go. It's the first half a dozen of the day. A sixer. Too short, yeah. Moreki really just dropping that way. Too short. Um, you know, for a man who's in, Hokokani. Has ridden his luck, goes to 21 now of 20 balls. And this was a problem with Moreki in that uh, previous game as well. He, was, he bowled a couple of great, he bowled a brilliant first over. No need for that short one. There is a m man back there for it, but misdirected completely. This was just helped on his way. And on the high felt, the ball just keeps going. Yeah, with the, with the bats these days, you don't really want to be bowling for guys to be caught on the boundary. In T20, you're going to disappear over them more often than not. And no one on the leg side, just working this one around to fine leg, who's, who's very square as well. They've got fine leg on the fence, they've got deep square and also mid wicket out for the right hander. So the plan is going to be hitting back of a length and forcing him to play that uh, shot and trying to get the boundaries going. But that was 50 up for the Darfur Bed Warriors, 50 for the loss of two. These two doing a fantastic job, partnership of 29. Yeah, 50 up in the uh, midway through the 8th over. It uh, looks like an interesting pitch, there's certainly a bit in it for the Seamers so far. Again, immediate call and immediate response from Okakane. Great running. And it's just this keeping this right-left combination going as well makes it very hard for the bowlers to settle into a line. Yeah, and some of the lines ground fielding has been a bit uh, messy as well. So, although they've done well, 51 for two after eight overs in the eighth over, the lines will know that you know they can sharpen up considerably, and uh, one fancies. If they can uh, restrict the Warriors to something below 150, mm. they're doing pretty well. That's uh, a very full and work through square leg by Mokokane. And that is uh, 52 for 2. Andile Mokokane and Jordan Herman doing a fantastic job. 23 of 22 is Mokokane in this over. Hitting the first six for the innings for the Warriors. A big change in the field as personnel comes around, comes across for Herman. Finally comes into the circle. They got deep square, deep mid wicket and also long on. Out and then deep point as well and third man on the fence. Getting inside the line, hitting the gap, and that's four runs to the Warriors. Beautifully played by Jordan Hanneman. 
sweet as you like, beautifully controlled hook shot. Uh, he's of course a guy who's batted at the top of the order a lot, so he's used to the new ball whizzing around his head. Uh, slightly different role now in the middle order, but uh, beautifully put away to end a very productive over for the Warriors. Absolutely a productive over for the Warriors. Two boundaries coming in there, it's over. And uh, it is not what the Lions would want because they had a hold on them on six overs, you know, 36. All of a sudden, in the last two, 20 runs have come from it. So run rate has gone up nicely as well. They're on the sevens now. They're on seven, 12 overs left. We got a change in bowling as Evan Jones comes in. His best four for 32 was against the uh, Durban Super Giants in T20s. Yeah, big, tall, strong guy, hits the deck hard. He'll be looking to just tighten things up a bit in these middle overs. Three men on the leg side boundary for him. Have a bit of a run through and a stare down to the batter, pulling away as he approached the crease. And you've got to feel the short ones is not really, Marek is not the pace to bowl the short ones. Cody Youssef and even Evan Jones might be the ones just to get the ball up in that throat nose area to make it uh, more difficult for the batters. Inside edge immediately, Evan Jones almost getting rid of Mohakane. Rickleton just unable to pick it up. And I also don't think there's much need to actually uh, rely on the short ball for wickets. As you saw from that delivery, there's enough in this pitch. If you're hitting good back of a length, uh, there's certainly some assistance there. That one nipped off the seam a bit. Uh, there was good bounce. So, uh, sure, we'll use the short ball as a, as a surprise option. But uh, as an actual strategy for getting wickets, I don't think it's necessary on the surface. Oh, this one worked away. Lovely wrist work by Jordan Arman to keep the scoreboard ticking and as you mentioned it's it's almost old school bowling now it's just hit the seam hit that five meter mark hit the seam let the pitch do the work just bowl it and we've seen all the wickets thus far has been good length deliveries yep you know you can throw in the odd slower ball there as well mm -hmm. just for variation Another fantastic single. It's almost drop and go for the Warriors. Just building this partnership all the way up to 38 now. And this is, as you mentioned, throwing the slow ball here and there. But the one thing that I've picked up, and we're in the ninth over already, and so far, no spin. Yeah, I was wondering when uh, Bjorn Fortain, the captain, might bring himself on, uh, just to stem the flow of runs a little bit. Uh, one man imagines it will be sooner rather than later. This one giving himself a bit of room. Followed by Evan Jones and just works around the corner. Adman just dealing in the singles. Very good by Evan Jones. He bowled to where his protection was there. He's got three men on the leg side boundary. And uh, just not allowing uh, Hermann at all to uh, free the arms and hit over the offside. Uh, which is what Hermann was shaping to do. Same field for Mokhakane. See finally coming into the circle. We have got mid-wicket on the fence. We've got a deep square. And now we see Vian Mulder getting sent down to long off. And then they've got a deep point sweeper as well on the fence. Oh, lovely lifting delivery. That's that extra bounce that Adman keeps showing us. It's just kick off the surface. And with Evan Jones' height, he's going to get a little bit more bounce than the average bowler. That certainly took off a bit. That was a super delivery. And uh, quite well directed. Not too much width. So Mokokane was cramped a bit in trying to uh, work that ball away. Trying to get the uppercut in. Wow, that was pace and bounce indeed. That was a lovely delivery and it's exactly what you want. One more ball to go in the ninth over. Oh, this one is full. It is wide. It is stand and deliver stuff from Mohakane. It's four for the Warriors. Yeah, poor delivery. Way too much width for allowing Mohakane to free his arms. Uh, 
Jones's protection on the offside boundary very square. Uh, so that was just lashed to extra cover. And an easy boundary to end what was actually a very good over by Ifan Jones. 64 for two, nine gone. A bit of a mixed bag there by Evan, Evan Jones. It's one of those where he bowled those good deliveries and then just again that last ball of the over just going for the four. It's the second over in a row where the last ball has gone for a boundary and you alluded to it. Here comes the man. Skipper says, hold on. Let me bring myself on. Let's see if I can't get a bit of turn. As Bjorn Fortain comes into the attack. And this is his 126th match. Yeah, very experienced campaigner, very reliable campaigner. And uh, once again, one of the leading wicket takers in this competition. And one just feels a crucial stage here for the Lions. As you mentioned, Claire Jones, just really a good over with the boundary off the last ball. It turns it from a, you know, if you just go for one there, it's five off the over. Captain's happy, fielding signs happy. Eight off the over feels like a bit of a win for the batting side. So Fortain will be looking to keep them to singles here. He's got a long arm and a long off in place and a deep cover as well as a deep square leg. There's the one just uh, greeting him to the crease. He does enjoy bowling to the right handers, does Bjorn Fortain. He's got that slider that almost swings into the right handers. We normally takes it away. Mokakane yeah. pretty set at the moment. Yeah, the arm ball, we'll see it at some stage, no doubt. Bjorn Fortain deceives them in the flat. They think they think they can cut it. Uh, they end up getting themselves into serious strife. You can just, just hear the band in the background creating one heck of an atmosphere here at DP World Lion at Wanderers. Catch me, Bjorn! Oh, this one just chipped over the let's bowler. Reza, let's have a reason. Trying to go for the second this time, me very quick in from the fence. I'm not sure how intentional that was by Mokakane. Uh, definitely a bit of a miss at just clearing Bjorn Fortain. We've seen the knack in the uh, last year or so where uh, batters enjoy going back to the spinners. And now we see around the wicket to the left hander. Oh! This one worked into the gap. Is it another boundary? Yes, it is. It's another four time. It's four for the Dalphabet Warriors. Lovely little shimmy there. He's such a quick judger of length, Jordan Hellerman. Uh, he's got quick feet and hands, and uh, the pull shot is really a strength of his. That was beautifully timed, and uh, very well placed too between the two men on the next side boundary. Just see the band there. Everyone just enjoying it, especially after a boundary from their home team. That's Again, me. quick feet and just oh. dropping short of Temba Bavuma. I think, he may, I think he may have lost that for a second. <laughs> the fielding was a bit awkward in the end, but he did well, Bavuma, to stop it going through. Again, Herman, we can just see him just moving across to that off stump. That's where he pulled the boundary from. He tried the previous one as well and Fortain just pushed it across him and he nearly got himself in trouble. This time just working it onto the leg side, picking up another one, making sure that the scoreboard keeps ticking. Good comeback by Fortain. That is the end of the over. It's 10 overs gone. It is 71 for the loss of two wickets. The two men yeah. to be dismissed was uh, Pillay, who was bowled by an absolute jaffer by Mulder. And then also Bretzka getting the edge caught by uh, the keeper, Rickleton. And he was out for just two runs. Mokokane and Jordan Harman doing a fantastic job. Their partnership with that last single has moved up to 50 now. And it's exactly what the Dalphabet Warriors would have wanted. Yeah, they've done a super job. Uh, Mokokani leading a charm life early on. He was dropped on naught first ball. He was dropped uh, a second ball on one. And then he was dropped a couple of balls later on three. But uh, he's done a, a super job at number 330 or uh, 28 deliveries. And he's also just allowed Jordan Hammond to get set and get his innings going as well. So these two are well placed now at the Midwest. So it's 71 for two. Again, that little shimmy 
Just to leg side this time round. Coming in for the second. This could be a run out chance. Oh, just a bit sluggish there in the outfield. Good throw. But it's again that immediate response to the second. It was too in their minds all the time. Yeah, the Warriors running between the wickets. Uh, very good this evening. Uh, good intensity, good urgency. And uh, I think the Warriors will think that if they can add another 100 in these last 10 overs, they've got wickets in hand at the moment. I, I think a score of 170 will be a, a very good one. Oh, this time around the corner. It is a big one. It is a maximum to Jordan Adman. Another six for the Warriors. He is so strong on the pull and hook. Uh, it's really not a good place to go against him. And uh, he picked up a beautiful four uh, a little bit earlier, beautifully controlled. And that one as well, just absolutely no chance for the fine league fielder as uh, it landed oh, probably 10 rows into the stands. The big M had a better chance of catching that than, uh, than the fielder. And again, Evans, I think the idea was there just to get it maybe round about throat height and then a bit more to his offside. But this one just misdirected. It was on the way down leg side and uh, lovely Herman just picked it up. Just helping it on its way. <laughs> Following this time round, just on the hips again, another two quick call. Fantastic running by the Warriors. They're doubling up on almost everything now. Yeah, clever cricket by Herman. Yeah, I think he learned from the previous over that he does. if he does a little shuffle outside next time, Jones is going to follow him. Uh, he was hoping probably for a slightly shorter length. But if it was fuller like that, he knows. He can just tap it into the gap. Uh, there's no one at square leg. And they can come back for two. No one at mid-wicket either. Oh, that's the one. That's the lifting delivery. Evans giving that one a bit more venom. Better line, better line, yeah. Just outside off some. I think that's the one they're trying. Just to get it outside off some, they're moving back into the left hand. They're getting pulling at that because that creates those top edges, especially with the ball lifting a little bit more. But the ones that's misdirected, it's on its way up. You can just get bats on it. They're not a high felt. The ball never stops flying. For sure, yeah. Not the uh, biggest boundary at the Wanderers mm -hmm. either. Again, just down leg, and this time lucky to get away with it. Are they going to double up? Yes, they are. This could be a run out chance. Oh, Jordan Harman so quick between the wickets. This is absolutely amazing running by the Warriors. Brilliant running. I, I think if Chepa Mareki had scored a direct hit, it might have mm. been interesting. But uh, Jordan Harman, as you say, as he hits that ball, he's thinking too. And he's yeah. sprinting the first and he's so quick to turn around and sprint back for the second as well. I think you're absolutely right because it's one of those things where they're almost asking the fielders that you must go for direct hit. If you're not direct hitting, we're not out. And the pressure is all on the Lions where they've shifted it so nicely to the Lions. This time timed a lot better to that fielder. This time just the one. And that brings the end of the 11th over. It is 84 for the loss of two. This partnership is 63. And that over 13 runs coming from it. It's so true what you say, Gert, about the pressure shifting. You know, these two have been together for eight overs now. 63 runs added, as you said. And uh, it was a bit of a delicate time when they came together. You, you sense that the Lions had got their bowling plan sorted out with bowling better. Uh, we're creating opportunities and it looked like the Warriors were under pressure but now certainly the Lions uh, they could do with a breakthrough and just shows you those missed opportunities Mohakani making them pay he's 30 of 28 Jordan Herman has uh, rocked on to 33 of 24 again shuffling across this could be the wicket oh and another drop in the outfield and it looks like it is Pile. Oh, sorry, Cody Yusuf has dropped that one. Yes, it is. Cody Yusuf has dropped a regulation catch in the outfield. And it's almost like it's the third one that they look like they're not picking it up. Yeah, he, he didn't seem to get under it properly. He had to come forward at the end. Uh, misjudged the flight a bit, one felt, where 
He had time to get under that quite comfortably, oh, really. Yes. It didn't need to be a low cap. Copion! Portain would be absolutely livid. Oh, my word. PJ Another go. call for two. Well, the, oh, these two will definitely turn. They'll double up. Fuck my dog. That's you can hard. just hear that dugout applauding all these twos from the batters. Great work. And, oh, now they've dropped Mohakane. They've dropped Jordan Herman. So that's uh, four drop catches in the innings already, which, you know, the... The first three, any of them would have been good catches, mm. but uh, line standards, they would have expected to take a couple of those. Catch me! Again off the back foot. This time round, I feel there would only be one. Yes, it is. Better time, and also, that one just getting back into his crease. So close to the bowler, you never know when it comes overhand. Mulder doing great work, anticipating that one. And the pressure has been put on the Lions where, oh, they looked down and out at the Warriors in that first power play, scoring only 36 in the power play. All of a sudden now, they are running Sweet. at about 7.7 .7 to the over. Oh! Oh, flight to delivery a lot slower than the others. And uh, Adamon's uh, eyes just lit up there. I thought he was going to have a bit of a go. No one had extra cover. Bowling beyond. Just missing out on that one. Fourteen to Herman. <laughs> Fourteen getting, a, I think, a little bit frustrated. Feels that uh, the batter might be stealing a couple of yards. Great page. He wasn't. Mokokani yeah. was uh, well in his crease there. Yes. Again, yes. top edge. Oh, this time round, just eluding. Sapamla stretch out hand. Fantastic work there on the fence. But it is another couple of runs to the Warriors. And oh man, four leaf clovers. What else do they have in those pockets? Yeah, Mokokani leading a. Uh, well, it was Herman, in fact, that time. Just evading the short third man. Second time in the over, he's evaded the fielder. Again, just the one. That brings to a close the 12th over of this innings for the Dalphabet Warriors. 33. Andile Mohokane from 30 deliveries. Jordan Herman, 37 of 27. Scores 91 for the loss of two. And they're going at 7.7. .7. Yeah, it's been a fantastic... Uh, partnership this with 71 now what they really did well uh, you mentioned the power play just 36 runs scored in it but they had lost two wickets and it's as if they just decided emphasis on not taking too many risks get through the power play with only two wickets down uh, they, they were very urgent and very focused on getting the ones and twos which got the partnership going and uh, you know they could have been 36 or 4 in the power play uh, which really would have been a, put them in a very tricky position. But the Warriors now have the upper hand. As you change in bowling, as Riza Hendricks comes into the attack, with all the seamers doing all the work and uh, creating chances, they might feel that spin is the way to go here. Well, at least some um, off spin to the left-handed Jordan Harriman. He's not on strike at the moment. It's Mohokane just working that one off the hip. And even that ball, you can just see from our end here, the ball's just kicking a little bit more off the surface. So Hendrix you. might just have that toppy in store where he does get a bit more bounce. Short third man in place. He's quite square. Uh, is he going back? No, he's going finer. He, he, could, be, he could be in a sort of catching position here. Uh, for the Lions. Hendrix is switching around the wicket to the left-hander. He's trying to create it, just moving him back to the circle. Oh, it's not going to matter where you place him if you're going to bowl uh, juicy full tosses and he gets away with it. Vian Mulder picking it up and just uh, lunging it in. 94 for the loss of two partnerships, 73. And no need to take risk at the moment. Oh, 
Oh, this one is played into the gap. It is lovely footwork. Mohakane dancing around in the crease and picking the gap, and it's another fall. Yeah, very well played. There was just a hint, a little foot move it forward uh, that the bowler no doubt saw and just dragged his length back a bit. And uh, that allowed Mokokani to pull. And uh, he pulled very well indeed. Two away from 100. And uh, who would have expected this after the power play? There'll only be two down. Fortunate for the Warriors, they're only two down. The Lions fielding has let them down in this match. Just hear the roar of the Lions just trying to get the guys a little bit more motivated. You can be as motivated as you want to. You need discipline in the field. Again going around the wicket. This is going to clear the man there just over him. It is a half a dozen. Again, Reza Hendricks just chopping a bit short. And Okokani, I don't think he got all of that. It wasn't the sweetest strike. But uh, sweet enough to bring up the Warriors 100 off 80 balls, 6 fours and 3 sixes. This time dancing down the track. Just the one. And what an over this has been for the Warriors. Thus far one ball to go. Bringing up their 100 with a maximum. And already 12, 13 runs in this over. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, as soon as the part-timer, if you like, the sixth bowler... Well, he's actually the seventh bowler <laughs> before the Lions comes on. That's the time to capitalize and these two have done it superbly. And with this over being this good, they're going to double up on this one. It is fantastic running by the Warriors. Herman just dropping it into that mid-wicket and picking up another 2.15 from the over. And my word, what an over that was for the Warriors. Just simple cricket, but so sensible and uh, so clever as well by the Warriors. Very little risk involved in that over, but they got 15 off it. And uh, they are flying along now, 107 for two, with uh, seven overs left. 170 is definitely on the cards. And uh, you never know, if, if someone really explodes uh, in these last seven overs, they could not nudge that uh, towards 200. Yeah. Well, looking at that batting score card, this Kusile still needs to come in. Kriar can hit a very, very long ball. King still to come in. Bayer Swanepoel still to come in. Oh, this one is cut nicely, but that deep point just picking it up. Just for the one. I mean, Bayer Swanepoel, the left-hander, can hit it a long way as well. So there is a lot of batting still to come. So when do you feel they're going to kick on? Is it going to... Maybe around about the 16th oh, over, they feel they can take a bit more risk. I think these two will just gradually up the tempo a bit. We're already seeing signs of that. Oh! oh moving way across to the off stump there. Just trying to cut off the angle for Fortain. They'll uh, start looking for at least a boundary and over. Uh, you know, a couple of twos, a couple of singles. Uh, you know, that gets you up into double figures. Uh, every over, which would be a very good run rate. Oh, reverse sweep coming out. Great work by Rickleton. Like you mentioned, just that one boundary and over. They've moved to eight to the over now. So now it becomes almost unmanageable for the Lions. They need to pull it back from here because now it's easy going. It's eight wickets still in hand. Halfway through the 14th. Oh, footwork. This one is up in the air. This should be taken. This time around, no question whatsoever. Fantastic take there. Moreki just making sure they get rid of Jordan Herman. Well, I'm not sure what went wrong there for Herman. He's normally so good on the pull. Uh, it was almost off the back of the bat. Uh, back over his head to uh, Short Van Egg. I think a bit quicker from Bjorn Fortein. Uh, rushed him a bit. And uh, the Lions will be very, very relieved to see the end of Jordan Hanneman for uh, 40 of 32 deliveries, two fours and a six super innings. Fantastic partnership with Andile Mokokane, who's approaching that 50 mark. Jordan Hanneman, Patrick Kruger, I thought might come out. Here's a big striker, see if he can up the tempo a little bit. His best score of 86. 
Not a great average, but the strike rate of approaching 130. He's a guy who can hit you sixes, Patrick Cougar. We saw that a couple of weeks ago up at Supersport Park when the Warriors edged out the Titans. He comes in late and he has the ability to uh, straight away clear the boundary, which is uh, not a bad idea for the Warriors now if they can get someone like Kruger to score 30 or 12 balls at this stage of the yeah. innings. Uh, suddenly you get to the last four uh, and you're in a very healthy Not position odd. indeed. Fortain to Kruger. Oh! oh! Slashing away and immediately getting off the mark with a boundary. Hits that positive footwork, just getting rocking back and just cutting it away. Excellent cricket by Patrick Kruger. It's exactly what they would have wanted. That's his job. Come in, hit the boundaries, make sure they bowl at you. One more ball to go in the 14th, and then we're going to have a change in commentary. Fortain just uh, asking the fielders to go back to the fence. Make sure you're right on the boundary. Oh, again, just working around the corner. See Patrick Kruger setting off. He wants that second. That will bring the 14th to the end. It is 114 for loss of three wickets after 14 overs. Mokokane is on 47 of 36. We're going to have a change in commentary. David Mitchell coming in. So the Warriors very, very well placed after being sent into about 113 for three with uh, six overs remaining. And uh, welcome back to David Midgley. David, uh, the Lions, some damage control needed here. And uh, perhaps the best way to do that is by taking a few wickets. Well, crucially, we mentioned that the way that the Dalphabet Warriors were going to recover in this game was partnerships, and that's exactly what, they, what they've done, is okay, built a wonderful partnership over. there, only just recently broken. And uh, as you said, the Lions have got to find a way back in. Fionn Morda back into tag, immediately swung away by Patrick Kruger. Hasn't quite got all of it. The backward square leg will cut it off. Mulder was a little bit leg sideish uh, in the first over he bowled. And the front as well, just angling onto the pads. You mentioned Patrick Kruger in his 100th game today. So uh, an achievement for him in T20 cricket. Very useful all rounder, uh, Patrick Kruger in these white ball formats. <coughs> Well steered and again straight away they set off for the one. Just uh, puts the pressure on the fielder to make a clean take. And unfortunately for the Lions, there have been a few bobbles and uh, knock ons tonight. And even if there are half chances, Ken, or clear chances, you've got to take those catches. And they, they just haven't had anything stick in the way that they would have liked. Yes, difficult when it's hit as hard as it has been, but at this level. You back yourself with all the training that you do to take those crucial catches. Gives himself room. Moda follows him well. Thinking of the second. But uh, Cody Yusuf is in quickly to keep it to this one. Yeah, I think the Lions, when they do their debrief, will probably say they should have taken two of those three catches that Mokokani offered in his first three runs. And uh, the Jordan Herman one, certainly, that should have been taken uh, that only cost seven runs so three runs from the first ball of the over for the first three balls of the over what will they do here Lord go short it's a good pull but uh, again a little knock on and it will allow Mokokani to come back for his second and that'll be his 50 and uh, what an impressive innings it has been by Andile Mokokani the young man he, uh, That's his highest score in CSA T20 Challenge. Well, he rode his luck, yeah. Career high for him of just uh, 38 balls with two fours and two sixes. So, uh, well done to him for seeing it through a bit of a tough start. Having a decent season in his own regard. <laughs> Inside edge on to pad. His, his previous high score, 48 coming against Western Province. So an important 
cog in the batting order here for the Delphi Bit Warriors. Yeah, and given responsibility, you come in at number three. You know, Jordan Harriman could just as easily have batted in the top three. But uh, it's one of the things I like about Robin Peterson, the Warriors coach. He really backs his players. Uh, he gives them responsibility. And uh, because of that belief, more often than not, they thrive. Oh, full toss, put away. But fine leg manages to cut it off. I grab one for long. Good bit of work. It could have gone very poorly there for Lutus Pamlet. Was misdirected off the turf and he got his hands behind it. So the end of 15, 120 for three. Ken, five to go. Where would the Warriors like to end up? Well, minimum 170, I would say, with seven wickets in hand, uh, which I think could be a good score. Uh, we, we saw the new ball do a bit in the innings, and uh, I think the Warriors will try and nudge that towards 200 if they can. The last five overs is to uh, lots of bowling choices for the Lions. Here you see the bowling figures. Vian Mord has got one off. He's had a pretty good e one left. He's got a pretty good evening. Tepo Mareki two, Sapamla oh, two, Yusuf Five two, small spaces, mate. Evan Jones two. So it's uh, going to be spin to continue though. Oh, Bjorn Fortain. Another man. Experienced banker. Yeah, another man who's got <laughs> his uh, national contract, oh, but well earned after his four-day competition. Oh, Bjorn! Clearing <laughs> after this one. Rapoli and fielding lad. Uh, they will get a single. The fourth highest wicket taker for the Lions in CSA T20 cricket. Yeah, he's on the uh, verge of going uh, alone in third place, I think. He's tired of someone at the moment. Up the order. He's just uh, two behind Chris Morris now. Ah, oh, oh, a stumping chance. Stumping chance. It uh, beat him down the leg side. And it's been just that sort of evening for the Lions. Rickleton, hands on his head. Bjorn Fortain, hands on his hips. Oh, looking man. this way and that. And, oh. it, and that's been the night for the DP World Lions. Half chances, slight chances, perhaps, maybe, should have, could have, would have. Four biases really a hurtful uh, one for the wicket keeper. Catch me. I think the bowler's feeling even more hurt by not getting the wicket. That'll just be one too long off. It was Mokakani, the man who is the set batter. Yeah, you were telling us about who has the most wickets here in CSA T20 action. He is tied with Chris Morris here at this venue. But for the Lions in fourth place. That's it! run a big swing of the bat by Patrick Creer. But uh, not much timing. This is going to be a vital over for the Warriors. Out comes the sweep, but there's protection at deep square leg. I think it'll give them an idea of where they're going to look to score those runs. We just eye out where the bowling options are for the Lions, see where they may beat the fielders that will be in the ring. It's all about of a mind game. Big side again by Fortale, and he's got that sweep. Very powerfully struck by Mokokani, and in the gap, four runs. A wonderful way to end the over for the Jalfabet Warriors. Swept and swept powerfully. Just clanging into the advertising hoardings here. What a way to end the over. And congratulations as well as we mentioned, Mohakane with his highest score. That'll be in all T20 cricket. Yes. So CSA uh, T20 and all T20. Yes, in yeah, so. Division 2. He uh, got that uh, 52 not out against Pumalanga. Right, Cody Youssef will be bowling the 17th over. Not for 11 from his two been miserly frugal and quite frankly stingy with the ball in hand today. <laughs> Bjorn Fortain has meanwhile uh, bowled out his four overs so pretty certain that it's just going to be pace here on in for the last four overs. 28 runs from his four overs. Bjorn Fortain 
Another tidy evening. Here's Yusuf. Again, full in on the pads. But it results in a wicket. Well, he's lucky there, Cody Yusuf. Patrick Pierre has picked out Pian Morda at uh, deep square leg. Finally, Lions fans will say, finally, hooray. A bit of uh, exhale when one goes your way. He'd be frustrated with himself, Patrick Kruger. It was a juicy delivery that he should have dispatched with. And now he has to pay the price and head towards the change room. He's gone for 10 from 8. And the Warriors 131 for 4. The new man at the wicket, Sinatimba Oshile. And he's somebody who's been at the Warriors for a long time. And been vital for them to score runs when needed. A couple, yeah. couple of SAA call-ups, but this is a very different format. Well, he's played, he's played uh, T20 for South Africa already a few years ago, but uh, coming off a blazing half-century September Kushile. Yeah, that coming against the Dragons. 51 not out of 30 balls in his previous outing, so he'll be feeling in form. Hoping he strikes it as nicely in this innings. Cody Yusuf with the answers already. First ball of the over and he's picked up a wicket. What will he do in the remaining? Ah. Same line and length and uh, just took up to find leg. The lines have bought a lot of leg side deliveries or a lot of balls into the pads in this innings. I wonder if it's not uh, some sort of tactic. Perhaps maybe their planning would have suggested that the Warriors struggle with balls on, on, on that leg stump, yeah, we, uh, middle and leg stump line. We're pretty much using the center strip, so uh, ah! both boundaries are pretty equidistant. And that'll be wide. <coughs> Just going for the leg stump Yorker there. Mohakane having to do a bit of running repairs there. Something more irritating than when your your shoelaces are you know, getting tucked into the ankle there. I suppose some oddities around shoelaces. Steve Smith tapes his laces. Ah! Nicely pulled. Nicely pulled and thumped into the uh, section of the stands where there's the most crowd as well. That's a super hit yeah, by uh, Bokokane. Missing out on an opportunity there. Somebody in the crowd could have uh, grabbed himself some wonderful prizes. But uh, Cody Yusuf, that short delivery really wasn't in the offing there for him. And Mohakane, in the form that he's in right now, wasn't going to miss out. Again, leg side -ish, but this time Mohakane can only get a leg bye out of it. Uh, there was a winner in the previous uh, Lions home game, uh, Mr. Funderburg, claiming a 20,000 rand catch. Probably one of the few happy Lions fans around after that performance against the Tuskers. Seems to be their, their kryptonite, Ken, the Tuskers and the Lions. <laughs> well, there'll be an opportunity later in the competition at this very venue. <laughs> Tickled fine, but uh, fine leg is quite fine. Another little bobble and uh, allows them to come through for an easy second run. That's also something that's been of concern for the Lions is the fielding in the deep. There's not been a clean pick up here and there, and that makes the difference when you've gone and picked up a wicket with the first ball of the over, and then suddenly you know, the, every single extra run is, is just a freebie to the batting side. Middle has got that covered, so just a single to end the over. 12 runs off it, so the Warriors will be happy with that, and the Lions will be happy with the wicket that was taken. 143 for four. Mokakane, 62 from 44. He's got Sinatamba Koshile at the other end, four from three. And just the three overs left here, Ken, as we see the fans that have come out here midweek. It is school holidays for some of the schools, so 
that's why you'll see a little bit more of those youngsters out and about enjoying life ahead of the long weekend lovely to see all the kids and uh, it's uh, been a lovely evening actually there were a few clouds that maybe looked a little threatening earlier on but uh, it's a mild temperature uh, a good place to be the Wanderers this evening and with uh, three overs left on the Warriors already on 143 uh, the Lions are going to have a decent chase uh, on their hands batting second as uh, Luto Sapamla returns from the call at drive end especially since uh, the Lions top order struggled in the last game they'll no doubt be determined it's an ambitious stroke by Koshili he's good at those though he's good at the little uh, innovations for sweeps and paddles and dinks and dabs. Fanciful, fanciful. But you can look like an absolute hero if it comes off, but a true villain if you're bold trying such elaborate shots. Yes, if your off stump goes tumbling out of the ground, it's a bit embarrassing. Tip and run again from the Warriors. So Pumla has been tripped up running into uh, Koshile. And a very clever cricket by the Warriors. Only two out of that shot into the vacant mid wicket area. Just came across Koshile. He knew exactly where he wanted to hit it. Comes across his stumps and then just dinks it onto that onside. Hits it with such deft hands that the two was almost a foregone conclusion. To now I'm having a chat with Vian Mulder, some options about where he should be bowling, where where he would be most effective with lines and lengths. That's going to be down to long on again. Think he was second and again, easily, easily done. Excellent cricket by the Warriors. The Lions have favoured for much of the settings, having no one in the ring uh, in front of square on the leg side. But uh, four men on the leg side boundary. And the Warriors have uh, utilized that gap really well. No, no real uh, learning yet in this. So hopefully, Sipamla is able to just recognize what Koshile is hoping to do and mix things up. Went for the Yorker. It was a low full toss. Not a bad delivery, though. But again, it will be two makes such a difference doesn't it Ken when a side suddenly puts six runs together very quickly the hope now for the Lions is, is that they're able to maybe just keep it keep the, the blood flow down well if you add an, a boundary now into the server suddenly it's a 10 it's a double figures uh, with a ball to go so that's the key not to concede the boundary now for the Lions that could be it straight over mid-off it'll bounce a few times and then run into the fence so they have conceded the boundary a very good shot by uh, Koshile spotting the man was up and clearing him you're not quite timed maybe as well as he would like but nevertheless it's the effective result for them so 10 from the over and there's still a delivery to come what will Luto Supamla do. Oshile's got off to a fly here. 14 from 8. 150 up for the Warriors. Yeah, and that's just tipped and run. Long on is racing in, but he can't stop the two. Excellent cricket by the Warriors. Those last uh, 50 runs uh, have taken the 32 deliveries. So the acceleration has been really excellent by the team from the Eastern Cat. 155 for four with uh, two overs a man. And it's crucial as we have a look at the batting card there that you understand where the Dalphabet Warriors were and where they are now. Brietzka and Pelé falling fairly cheaply early on in the contest, but it was Mohakane and Herman that put a wonderful partnership together before where they were dismissed. And uh, that leaves them with two overs to go in their innings. At 155 for four. You said 170. Still within reach here, Ken. With the last over being ex as expensive as it was. Mokakane facing up to Mulder. 
whipped away off the pads. One bounce to fine leg. I think if the Warriors don't get 170, they'll be a bit disappointed, I think. Uh, the position they were in with a well-set partnership. So the Lions still have a chance to finish the innings well, take a bit of momentum into the change room. Uh, if they can just keep the Warriors quiet for these last couple of overs. Vian Muller, one for 21. One ball into his fourth and final over. Oh, nice change of pace. Very well bowled by Vian Muller. Necessitated, Ken, by the situation. It's been too casual for these two. They've just been dinking it and running the twos, maybe looking now to hit a couple of boundaries, feeling the fatigue of, of so many doubles. Yeah, I think you know Kashila is going to swing for the hills or uh, play the dink for two. That's <laughs> full again, Mamuda, that time. And uh, there was a scratch of bat on it. And cruci crucially here for Vian Mulder is he's managed to utilize a mixed bag of deliveries. That's vital when you need to stem the flow of runs and possibly put enough pressure on a, a side late in the innings to force a mistake. A reminder that there is a World Cup T20 later in the year. So everybody's vying for positions despite contracts. No, fantastic to long on. Are they coming back for second? Yes, they are. Throw was to the keeper's end. Yeah, Vian Mulder, uh, reckon his name is in the conversation. He had a brilliant SA20, mostly with the bat, but done a very tidy job with the ball here this evening. Quality all rounder. I think that's something that uh, Rob Walter and his team will have to mull over not really knowing what the, the wicket's like in the US. Again, whip leg side. Yeah. Pamela! Oh, nearly, nearly made a hash of that. Again, it's another knock on. Very frustrated. And you see Mulder, yeah, Mulder's frustrated because it should have been one, it becomes two. Sometimes it's just one of those things, Ken, that when it's not your day in the field, the ball seems to find you time and again. Well, and Lutus Pamela is struggling today. It's not just the Pamela. There have been lots of knock-ons by a lot of different players. It's, it's catching. It's, uh, we it's are an epidemic into, almost. We are getting into rugby season. <laughs> at schools level at least. It's going to be a wide. Yeah, I was going to say that the... Uh, United Rugby Championship is three quarters of the way through the season, David. I'm just thinking of school, schools. <laughs> Rickleton not taking that one cleanly as well, so everybody seems to be struggling with their fielding this afternoon, this evening, rather. Last ball of the 19th. This is the, uh, the Lions', Lions seventh game in the competition. <laughs> It's uh, hit firmly, but it'll just be one too long on. The seventh game in the competition, so this is only the halfway point uh, in the CSA T20 Challenge. So still lots of cricket to be played, and uh, the Lions in second place will have their eye on that 10-point gap between them and the Warriors at the top of the log. Vian Mulder has ended his four-over ration. Uh, one for 28 in this four overs. Good job by him. As we go into the last over with the Darfabet Warriors on 163 for four. Cody Yusuf is going to be bowling that final over. With uh, long, oh, long on is uh, heading back. There's a man a little bit in from Cow Corner. There's a deep square leg right on the fence. Fine leg is wandering back. And there's a deep, uh, quite a square, squarish deep cover field. Yusuf in, straight down the ground, nice blow. But uh, the long on will keep it to just two. It was hit well, but intentionally, I think, 
held back in the shot. Yes, the timing was there, but the placement was crucial, Ken, because it forced the man down on the boundary there to come a little bit straighter. 165 for four, five balls left in the over. Well, if Mokokani can get it straighter, uh, more over the bowler's head, he's got a boundary option there. Long off his middle for that. Meets it on the full hit again to long on. So middle fap. Great throw from Reza Hendricks there. All the way from the boundary and he's hit the stumps that the strikers in. Well safe was Pashile. Just taking it on the bounce. That'll uh, put a bit of pressure on the over eight. Unnecessary delays, unnecessary delays here, Ken. Come on. <laughs> well, it's only uh, 7 28 pm, so I think they've got time to spare. I think you've got to start the final over before half past seven. Oh, <laughs> that did not go where he expected at all, but uh, it has nevertheless gone to the fence. So the Timbit Kashile trying to paddle that leg side, and it's flown off the edge of the bat to the third man boundary. Not as uh, intended, Ken, but the result is nevertheless welcome. So that takes him to that magic of 170 that you predicted. Three balls to go, and there's not much you can do as a skipper when those types of shots are being played. Yeah, not a bad delivery from Cody Yusuf. Pretty full and outside the off stump. Not falling for the trick there, Ken, by keeping the third man in the ring so asking him well can you do it again let's see what Koshide pulls out of his bag of tricks oh, oh he had another trick but uh, it didn't come off and he swishes his bat at the air in frustration well done Dakota Yusuf just keeping bowling where he wants to be bowling not worrying about what the batsman's doing too much of a good thing, Ken, do you think? He's trying it one too many times. Yeah. I get where he is in the stage of the game. Cody he, Yusuf is bowling a reasonable length and there's no one on the bar, on the cover boundary you know, apart from Man Square, so he could hit it over there. Now the reverse paddle, but straight to short third man and just one. Good bit of awareness there to know that the man was there and if he wasn't going to be able to lift it over he's got to just get it to him on the bounce and the last thing you want is throwing a wicket away so late yeah so Mohakane on 71 he's got one ball to face Krishina may be getting a little bit carried away with those uh, you know he should have maybe been trying to hit over the covers Mohakane's worked that wide a fine leg good fielding by Chepa Mareki and it's two. So, what a wonderful way to end the innings. And it's all been set up by that wonderful, tremendous, stupendous effort from Andila Mohakane. His career best in T20 cricket. 73 from 51 deliveries. Ably supported as they went through the game after having been put into bat. And a handy score for the visiting side here. They'll feel confident especially with the wicket-taking opportunity or options that they have in Patrick Kruger's CSMA2 and uh, Bayer's Swanepoel. So just having a look at that scorecard, Ken, tell us about what your thoughts are. Well, the Dalphabet Warriors were in a, a bit of a tricky position. Uh, 21 for two after three overs. But uh, Andile Mokokane and Jordan Herrmann with their partnership of 87 uh, of 64 balls really just stabilized and he's got them to do the power play without further loss and then gradually put the Warriors into a position of dominance so uh, that was the one key partnership and then a very useful partnership here at the end 42 unbeaten uh, between Mokokani batting through the innings you always want one of your top three to try and do that he did it very well uh, with Sinitem and Koshile 22 not out yeah wicked apiece for Sipamla, Mulder, Yusuf and Fortain but it was the opening pair of Sipamla and Vian Mulder that really got the home side into the contest with the wickets that they took. Yusuf 
also very ha handy with ball in hand this evening. Fortain, 28 runs from his four overs, so helpful as well. Risa Hendricks going for 15 from his single over, and Evan Jones, 21 from his two overs. 13 extras, and that's been a little bit of a concern, can the amount of extras in this year's CSAT 20, a lot more than I think any team would, would like. Uh, six wides in there, I suppose that's... And the four buys kinda, doesn't help as well. Kind of average, uh, not too bad. Yeah, that was a missed stumping chance, but you know... Mulder, Cody Youssef, Bjorn Fortain, all good figures. They were probably the pick of the bowling, but you, you just kind of feel the lines. Uh, the fielders should have backed the bowlers a bit more. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, the Warriors are a good fielding side as well. Uh, if they come out here and really snap up their half chances, uh, ground fielding is sharp. Uh, it's going to be a testing chase for the Lions, and I think Bayer Swanepoel with the new ball uh, could be a bit of a handful as well. Absolutely. So don't go all that far. Keep us on your audio. We'll be back with you just after the innings break. This is the CSA T20 Challenge. My name is David Midgley. Ken Borland is alongside me. And Gert Maloney will be with us a little bit later. Don't go anywhere. Wazanawe.
are coming out. It's going to be a big chase for the DP World Lions. Myself, Gerard Maloney, taking you through this first session with my partner in crime, David Mitchell. Thanks, Gerard. It's a cracker of a game. We said at the top of the broadcast it was going to be a clash of two incredible sides. The Dalphabet Warriors unbeaten thus far in the CSA T20 Challenge and the DP World Lions having done so well in this year's competition find themselves in second place despite that uh, little bit of a blip against the AET Tuskers but the bowling power that the Dalphabet Warriors have Ooh. here Gert, and especially with the struggles that the top order have had in the last game for the DP World Lions this is a mouth-watering contest well, this is going to be all about the start, isn't it? Because if you see who's opening the batting for the Lions, it's Prisa Hendricks and Ryan Rickleton. Opening the bowling for the Warriors is the name that's been on a lot of lips over the last few years. Is Bayer Swanepoel. Yeah, he was somebody who was crucial in the fixture between these two sides in one-day cup earlier in the season. Swanepoel and Patrick Kruger being crucial for the Warriors. But having picked up 8 for 131 in this year's competition and an economy rate of 6.5, he's just somebody that you expect something is going to happen when he's got the ball in hand. He's got a fresh one and he goes to Reza Hendricks. One slip in place. Oh, big appeal and it's given first ball. A bit of a royal duck for Reza Hendricks and what a strike by Bayer Swanepoel. Incredible delivery here. Drama up front and the Dalphabet Warriors, rightfully so, are cock a hoop. Riza Hendricks, back to back ducks. And you cannot blame them for that celebration. What a cork over delivery up front. We saw with the seamers when the Lions were bowling, there's just something in it. Just look at this back leg running in hard. First ball going. That is gone for money. That's crashing into middle and leg. And Riza Hendricks did have a little bit of a glare at the umpire, but I don't think he can be too unhappy with that one. Yeah, Rossi Fanadison is the new man at the wicket. And having opened in his career, he's well suited to coming in at first drop. Serious, serious, serious drama at the DP World Wanderers. The Lions having struggled with their top board in the last game, falling victim to Keith Dudgeon. Could this be... More of the same, but this time to Bayer Swanepoel. Bayer Swanepoel, what a start. And the last person you want his tail up is Bayer Swanepoel. Rickleton on the other side, thinking that it can't happen again. We just look at this replay again, running in lovely rhythm from the get-go. Getting the ball to nip back. Oh, what a ball to face first up. Swanepoel into Van Dusen. Oh, and he swings it away this time, and uh, a little bit of a fiddle by Rassi van der Dusen. Positive intent is the idea there from Rassi van der Dusen. He's just having a, a look at the surface here, saying it didn't look all that difficult when I was fielding, but it's very different when you've got a bat in hand, and Bayer Swanepo with this delivery. Incredible one to get rid of Riza Hendricks. Again, this one, just Rassi van der Dusen dropping down on this one, making sure that he gets all over it. Just the one. First runs on the board there for the Lions, and he avoids the, the dreaded duck. Now he puts the pressure on his teammate, Ryan Rickleton. I wonder if Bayer Swanepoel will come around or, or go over. It looks like he's setting up to come around to the left-hander, knowing what is on offer with swing. Already picked up that crucial wicket of Riza Hendricks. Already on the back foot, early wickets is going to be crucial for both teams here. We saw the great consolidation by the Warriors. Now it's going to be hard work for the Lions, Rickleton and Van der Dusen. Look at the bend on that one. What a delivery. Ryan Rickleton just again looking at that surface. He knew what was coming, but there's not much you can do. That one just taking a little bit of an inside edge. And he 
it was a very confident shot from behind the stumps. Maybe misplaced though. Let's just have a look at this one again. He comes around the wicket very wide on the crease and it just hoops in. What movement was that? Bayer Swanepoel, you beauty. The first couple of deliveries has been on song. We now know why he's so celebrated at the moment. Rickleton. Oh, you'll have a close look at each and every delivery now. Lovely shape into the left-hander. This time right behind it. He's got a slip in place. And he's also got that third man very fine on the ring. He's got deep points out and deep square on the fence for the left-hander. Warriors determined to give the home side here, the DP World Lions, a masterclass with their fielding. That You can just feel the energy squeezing in here, slip in place, and as you said, fine leg and third man very tight in. Oh, this time the ball just straightens up on the left-hander. Could free those hands through the line just to get the off the dreader duck and there we go first over gone oh almost out of breath already two for one it's a very similar start to what the Dolph bed warriors had wicked wise but they had that first over that was a bit wayward from sapamla and this time round, early wickets for the lions not what they wanted the equation is 172 of 114 deliveries Rassi van der Dissen can be so destructive with the bat, as can Ryan Rickleton. But that will be little consolation with the type of bowling that has been offered here. And a familiar face to you, Gert, JP King, getting a chance to uh, bowl from the caller drive-in. Yeah, young man there from my valley. I had a lot of dealings with him. Go to Rickleton. Oh, misfield there. Four runs, first ball. Open face slap through the fielder. Yeah, just giving giving himself a little bit of extra width there, Ryan Rickleton. And fortune favoring him in this instance with a bit of wayward fielding. The line showed us the way not to do it, and it looks like they haven't learned. This one just short and wide. Could just slap through the line. JP just a bit short. Oh, much better there. There's some turn. Kushile. Appealing for something. He was the only one who heard it. Just some, some banter between two wicket keepers there. Maybe a bit of hopeful. Oh, JP falling over and uh, doing a great job fielding or harboring that one on his own almost like an ice hockey goalkeeper <laughs> smothering that one going nowhere good low angle there oh he's getting some purchase he's getting some purchase off this deck nice high action much better from the youngster he's not trying to rush through his over here i think it can be intimidating when you're in this cauldron and Bowling to two South African players, you might get ahead of yourself, but he's much better at this ball. Again, saw him coming this time round. Fielder picks it up. Except for that one ball that was slapped through the fielder. Pretty decent over. Four dots in a row. Pressure building on the home side here. Oh, this one just lofted over. That deep midwicket just coming across. Keeping it down to the two. And it almost looks like he he stopped in the shot. A little bit lift. Getting just underneath it. Just trying to almost chip it over the yeah. fielder. Yeah, and at the end of two, it's eight for one. So a healthy over welcoming JP King to the game. But the Lions need to go at 9.2 to the over. So ones and twos are not going to do it here, Gert. There's, there's got to be... A little bit more. You remember that 36 was scored in the power play for the Warriors from where they consolidated brilliantly from there. But already two overs in, going at four. Oh, you need one or two big overs. Van der Dusen just moving across to that off stump and Bayer Swanepoel just getting a bit carried away, going for that miracle swing maybe. The first extra, the first wide 
in this innings for the Lions. Uh, just too much from Bayer Swanepoel. We had to have some sort of uh, flaw in the, <laughs> the last over being brilliant. This one may be just reminding us that he is human. Oh, there's that shape away from the right hander, that deep point that most teams have utilized pretty well across the season coming into play. And we saw prodigious movement into the left hand of the previous over. There's going to be more of that. Ryan Rickleton will have a keen eye on this. No, no easy start, but you've really got to apply yourself as a better here. Really got to make sure you're watching the ball. Oh, Rickleton just launching over the inner ring. One bounce fall. It is the first boundary for the DP World Lions. Yeah, just hit it on the up there. He knew the man was in the ring on the onside. So safely dealt with. And that'll be welcomed by the DP World Lions. You see he's batting very deep here. It takes a step back in first. Turns a delivery that would have been a decent length into one that's too short and he just helps it on its way. And also we intend to hit it with that man at deep square out. He just knew he needs to go a lot straighter. And as you mentioned, just on the up, getting an elevation over the field as this prompt to change into the field. As long on. And deep square is now on the fence. Well, it just looks like uh, the plan will be, there's a lot of swing on offer. Let's go fuller and straighter. See if they don't want to pick it off of the legs. Ryan Rickleton's such an accomplished cricketer in domestic circles within South African cricket, as is Rusty van der so the Lions won't be panicking just yet with the amount of experience that they have. Timber Bavuma also in the shed, so if there's going to be a bit of a rebuild, some confidence from the Lions change room. Good call, just dropping again. Soft hands by Fana Dusen. A little bit of a page out of the Warriors book then. Teaching them how to play at their own home ground were the Dalphabet Warriors. It's a, a contrast in the over here is that the Lions have just been sensible, not reckless with the way that they've approached it. They saw out that first over from Bear Swanepoel and now just deciding to be a little bit more circumspect just drop and go and when the wayward delivery does come pounce on it oh top edge keep a calling for it Kishile says it's mine and it's another week for Bayer Swanepoel and it's the massive wicket of Ryan Rickleton I just said they were being a little bit more circumspect with the DP World Lions not being reckless and Rickleton knows exactly what he's done there he's just been aggressive beyond what was necessary and the Lions two down now and in some serious trouble here just the one that rushed him a little bit there and also the ball just moving away from the right hander just straightening up on it from around a wicket clever bowling by Bayer Swanepoel and already eight from the over almost feel that that wasn't needed could have easily been tucked around the corner or maybe just guided down to third man. Just keep the scoreboard ticking and now it brings Temba Bavuma to the crease. Well, somebody who has served South African cricket for many years, opened at one point for the national side, but finds himself at two down here. 16 for two. And the Warriors side are just cruising at the moment. Lions under some serious pressure. They need to go to 9 to the over. They're only going at 5.6, but if you lose an, a wicket every third over, you might find yourself very short in this game. This is exactly the position that the Warriors was in, and this is where the rebuild started, and this is exactly what they need from Bavuma and Van der Dusen. Off the mark immediately, and all... Oh! Oh, and a bit of an overthrow. Extra runs here for the DP World Lions. That's five on the scoreboard. Yeah, 
Pavuma nearly found found himself really short there. Great bit of effort from Mohakane to put it the incoming batsman under pressure, but there was no backing up there, and so as a result, five runs. That's something that they will want to forget about quickly. It's the end of three, and it's 21 for two. You can just see Bayer Swanepoel walking back there, and he is absolutely fuming. You can see him trying to calm himself down. He'll probably get another over. And, oh, but necessary. Tema Bavuma just stopped running there for a second. He never thought that Mokokana is going to go to his end. He nearly had himself in trouble. And this is the key for the Warriors. The find of the season thus far. Yes, yes, Simetu getting the backing from Robin Peterson. Having picked up 12 wickets for just 116 runs, that's an economy rate of 5.04. So he's been vital and the leading wicket taker in this year's CSA T20 thus far at the halfway stage. And, and now a bit of a word. Now a bit of a word from CSA Metu. Maybe a wry smile as umpire Kuma signals dead ball. And also what makes this so brilliant effort for this season is he's been bowling in the power plays. Oh, there's definitely a lot of purchase there. We saw it from J.P. King as well. There's purchase from that end. And here from the golf course end, you get that extra bounce. And that's, oh, it's going to make it very hard to get settled as a batter. He does have that slingy action. Just the one, Tema Bavuma just dropping it into a vacant mid-wicket area. Not your conventional left arm spinner is Siasumetu. But as we've seen time and again with so many cricketers around the world, it's not the one that has to be pretty to be effective. It just has to be the one that gets you the wickets. He has a bit of a Jadeja feel to him, doesn't he? Just unconventional. Changing the field now. He's just asked the third man to be slightly wider. The two men out are long off and a fielder down in the cow corner region. Van der Dusen, very watchful, watching that right onto the bat and having a bit of a lunge forward to it. Patience is going to be key, key here for Rassi Van der Dusen. Oh, this one a bit quicker, a bit flat, and again another thumble there by JP King. Yeah, a lot of uh, the fielders this evening have been struggling with that first touch. It's almost like they've been, you mentioned earlier, like they're struggling to pick it up a little bit. Could be the bright lights of Joburg. The city of gold is shining brightly indeed. Oh, this one worked around the corner. Lovely little paddle. Just nerdled and uh, keep it down to one. Something that I've just noticed as we saw Bayer Swanepoel do some fielding there. It looks like there may be a, a covering of, of moisture on the surface and that's maybe to, to the, the benefit of the field is that's maybe why the ball is a little bit greasy. Oh, shimmy down the wicket. Just an easy one. Do you think the Lions will claim that as well? No, I don't think a <laughs> team like the Lions will blame any of their mishaps on the, the outfield. You know, you, you, it's something that good coaches will always tell you, control the controllables. Yes. And that's, you, that means you've got to just look after your own, uh, own, own decisions. End of the fourth, 25 for two. The Lions needing just under 150 to win. They need to go at 9.3. They're only going at 6.2. And to give you an idea of where perhaps they should be, 25 for two, but DLS par is 43. Not a gospel definition of where you should be in the game but a good indicator of where the game expects you to look towards so man out at cow corner deep square so I want to pull into fun at hitting that short fly leg for oh, oh. oh Temba Bavuma he looked like he was found wanting once again calling a big one oh suicide run yeah, Alfred Matua there at uh, just that fine leg, short fine leg region. 
quick pickup from him. A little bit late there from Temba Bavuma. Looks like he didn't quite know where he wanted it. Yes, no, and then set off. And then would have been found well short of his ground, you suspect. Well, Swanepoel starting his third over. We suspected he might get another one. He's getting lovely movement. Okay. Pushing that one on the up. Neat little shot there by Babuma. Swanepoel just hanging that one outside, wide outside the off stump, knowing there's a short third man in place. Maybe looking for that shot in, in error or, or an unforced mm. uh, shot of, of anger. Just expecting knowing, Temba maybe to go hard hands at it. Yeah, knowing what the required rate is. And again, prodigious movement means that Temba Bavuma just shoulders arms to that one. Oh, Bayer Swanepoel is one of those bowlers that, oh, he's just hitting the marks from the get-go. Rickleton looked like he was going to get on top of him and then just from there picking up the valuable wicket of Ryan Rickleton. Two for 16, busy with his third. This one moving into the right-hander. It just shows you, if you go across the world, bowlers like Anderson, you don't need to bowl at 150. If you can swing the ball, you'll pick up wickets. Especially in these conditions, value of the ability to mix up your deliveries, change your pace here and there, make sure your lines and lengths are consistent, has such a profound impact on a game and can make the most skilled batters look like they're out of their element. Oh, Temba Bavuma going for the big heave-ho and uh, completely misjudging that one, coming way too early. Bayer Swanepoel saw him coming. Just having a look at the square leg umpire, umpire Kuma, maybe thinking that he might have gotten away with the one for the over. But it's been a great over thus far from Bayer Swanepoel. Just a single to now put pressure on the DP World Lions and ask them where will their solution come to this problem. Oh, another great delivery. Just the one. And what an over once again. Only two coming from it. And this is still mentioning it's in the power play. That was the fifth over that's gone. 27 for two. And oh... That required rate is creeping up, getting closer to the double figures. Now 9.8. The Warriors were 34 for two at the same stage. And so the Lions playing a little bit of catch up after the early wickets of Reza Hendricks. As you can see there, the comparison. Reza Hendricks and Ryan Rickleton. Reza Hendricks falling off the first ball. And that partnership just slowly starting to build now. They need to set that platform so that they can accelerate. The experienced Alfred Mutua, a man who spent many years on the high felt, but having made the shift to the Warriors, maybe he's enjoying life at the coast a little bit more, a little bit more of a relaxed atmosphere. Relaxed so? pace, yes. He's been around South African cricket for an eternity and a servant to the game. Has only played 44 T20 matches. It's got a very long action. It's all arms and legs when he bowls. No, no express space by any means stretch of the imagination. Yeah, he's got that nickname of uh, Harmison, likening him to Steve Harmison from England based on, on his action. And anyone who's met Harmison will actually notice this is almost like a mini Harmison because Harmison is a very, very large individual. Well over two meters tall. Yeah, Motua getting his debut way back in 2017-18. And Rusty van is just having a look around at the field to see who might be a victim for him. What I like about the Warriors, and it's contradictory to what the Lions did, is they're pitching it up. They're keeping it full, they're hitting the seams, let the ball and the pitch do the work. Let the batters take the risk because that's now where they are. One or two darts, a single here, a single there, and the run rate's still creeping up the whole time.
set off very quickly there. Tampa Bavuma nearly had his ankles taken out there with that throw. <laughs> uh, sets all very quickly. Immediate response from Van der Dusen. But again, Warriors wouldn't mind singles at the moment, especially in the power play. This being the last over of the power play, halfway through the sixth. Matua bowling a great over thus far. And he going for the three. You've got to feel that someone's got to take a chance. This one ball just cuts away from the right hand. You can actually see Kishile with a bit of a smile there. Thinking, uh, what did that hit? And enjoying his bowler's fruit. And a little bit of a chat there from Sumetu. Just some consolation maybe. It, it's not easy. And that's the reality of playing cricket this late in the year, Gert. Mm. Late in the season rather, as we head towards the end of March and April bringing the autumn weather. Oh, again, just squaring him up. That is true what you're saying. The pitches, all of a sudden, over the last few weeks, the, the dynamics have changed completely. And the preparation of the tracks becomes a lot harder as well. Absolutely. With the cooler temperatures, it means that ground staff are, are not going to have those hard, bouncy wickets as you would normally expect because of the sun baking down. Yes, it was warm today. But in the mornings, I can assure you, it's not something uh, that cricketers would love to go out and, 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 and field first in, let me tell you that, free end of the sixth, and it's 31 for two. We'll have a commentary change at the end of the over. That's the uh, legend himself, Ken Borland, coming in. And the Lions are playing a little bit behind the eight ball here. I feel they got to take a chance somewhere because otherwise they're going to just leave themselves too much work to do in that latter part of the innings 143 still required as Nielen van Heerden comes in best of two for eight and that came off uh, three overs against the Tuskers back in the 21-22 uh, season yeah Nielen van Heerden somebody who can just change the game ever so slightly if he gets a rhythm going here but he does have the knack to give away a bit of a runs as well so hopefully for the Lions they feel that he won't hit that rhythm oh shy no he held back he knows the backup is far away Fanadusen set off immediately you can just see what Van Dusen is trying to do. He's just trying to rotate the whole time, get a partnership going. It's up to 16, but also just get himself going as well. The more in positive intent he can get, maybe create a bit of luck for himself. Get his feet like, moving, yeah, yes. Yeah, like Mohakane did for him. Absolutely, and that's going to be crucial here for the Lions as they look to rebuild. They are feeling the pressure, no doubt. Only going at 5.2 to the over, where they need to go at over 10. So, as you said, it needs to be seeking for boundaries Babumba just sitting on that one almost in uh, in two minds there am I gonna guide it down or just punch it through the covers and just sitting on it dropping it on his head and it can be argued as well that uh, Temba Babuma not a recognized T20 player it might be good news for the Warriors to keep him around in their perspective and Bavuma has shown in the 50 over game that he can he can he can go at a decent rate as well absolutely he struggled a little bit in the shortest format of the game but now is the time to turn it around and what a stroke to turn around with he oh. silenced you Gert. what a shot oh keep quiet tall man Bavuma not a big man but he packed a punch that ball was absolutely rocketed through that point they've got a sweeper on the fence who had about 10 meters to move and he only went to pick it up yeah just too much width there from Nielan van Heerden and uh, slapped away through that point region disdainedly slapped away oh oh this time round wide ball given Timo Vuma giving him a bit of a charge as well 
So the intent is there. They might feel that this is the bowler they need to target. It's the second wide in the innings. That's uh, another thing that the Lions gave away. They gave a couple of wides away in that first six. Yeah, and that can be so costly in allowing a batting pair to get back into a game. Those wides are just free bees. Oh, this one just ducked around the corner for the one deep square coming up. Picking it up. JP King throw an inning. And it's one of those situations where you don't want to copy the other team, but it's almost got to be a blueprint at the moment because the partnership is growing. The running between the wickets is pretty decent at the moment, but they need 136 of 80 deliveries. It is a long stretch. Definitely. They don't want to feel like they're chasing the game. With the success that's been found, batting second, feeling confident in their batting order, but you don't want to let the game slip away. Again, just targeting those boot laces. Just the one. One more delivery to go in the seventh over. And we can have a bit of a commentary change after the seventh. It is the man, the legend, Ken Borland, coming in. 39 for the loss of two, Jesse Brietzka. Maybe just asking the bowler, let's just finish it off nicely. Oh, Bavuma going for the big one. Sent back and it's a dot ball to end off the seventh. Yeah, not where he wanted to send that ball. And not as expensive as the DP World Lions would like. The Dalphabet Warriors on top at the moment. One over beyond the power play. Just having a look at this one again. Van Heerden to close out his over. Very wide in the crease. And Tema Bavuma trying to play his shot that he's most famous for that just pick up shot onto the onside not able to execute in that manner the band is in full force and the legend himself Kenny B Ken Borland is beside me once again fired up are the Dalphabet Warriors Ken well it's a intriguing state of the game Rusty van der Drussen there who has so much experience of uh, successful run chases we know who he is someone who likes to take his time at first uh, and then really accelerates, goes, goes through the gears so well. The uh, required rate, 10.4 to the over, so he and Bavuma will be keeping an eye on that. They won't want to let it get much higher than that. Sumetu to start a new over. Just whips this away wider the man at long on and that'll race away to the boundary. An absolute lightning bolt, Ken. Nothing slog in that, but just pure timing. Superb batting by Rossi van der uh, Identifying the ball to come down the wicket to, creating the length so he could drive, and then just absolute precision placement between uh, what is quite a square long on and a cow corner. Again, Sumetu pulling out of that one. Have a look at this one again, Ken. Just whipped away from a delivery that he turned into one that was too full of a length. And that's the intelligence of an experienced cricketer. As you said, like Rossi van Edison, he can just turn this game on its head when he, he changes gears. Very wide of the crease there from Sumetu. Trickled away onto the onside. They'll just think about collecting the one. I think uh, the delay in bowling that ball might be because uh, Sumetu is just struggling a bit to grip it. I think there might be a bit of dew. You can uh, see he's got the towel at the back of the shorts and uh, just studying the ball very intently and he's gripped there. He gives it a wipe. And just asking the man at square leg to go a little bit behind square. And immediately they set off for the first. Sumetu having to do his own fielding here. Well, the Lions, are, specifically these two, are taking a leaf out of the Warriors' book. Both uh, Rassi van der and Temba Bavuma running the singles very well. Not quite as many t twos so far. Uh, the Warriors fielding just a little bit more secure than the Lions so far. 
Six from the over thus far. It's too much width there. Funner doesn't come down the wicket and strokes that out to that long off position. Siasimetu has had a bit of a resurrection of his career, Ken, as you, uh, you were telling us a little bit earlier while we were off air that he's just been given that opportunity by Robin Peterson and has taken it with both hands. Well, that one didn't quite go anywhere near where <laughs> either of them wanted yeah. it to go. It just took a strange bounce out the surface there. Bavuma gets hit in the lower abdomen, but I think he'll survive. Well, he, he put the dive in. It really wasn't necessary. I don't know if the bowler um, balked him, if you like, by uh, shouting hit or something, or Bavuma thought he was in danger, but uh, he had plenty of time. This will be knocked out to that long off position. So that's the end of the eighth, 48 for two, with Funadison on 16 and Bavuma on 16, rather, Funadison on 17. Bav Funadison on 17, Bavuma on 16, and they're going at nearly a run of ball each. Can see a Sumetu with a bit of a resurrection of his career? Yeah, it, it's one of the stories of the season for me. I mean, he was a very talented spinner. From a young age, played his in the 19s, was in the system, moved around a little, didn't get that much opportunity, and uh, really he's been in the wilderness. Uh, he was playing club cricket in, in the Western Cape, and uh, Robbie Peterson, such a great identifier of talent and uh, backer of players, went and fetched him from the club leagues in Western Province and uh, offered him a contract for the Warriors, has resurrected his career. And uh, Sumetu has been an absolutely key performer uh, in the Warriors' unbeaten run so far in this competition. Patrick Kruger will be bowling from the golf course end with his first over. Short and pulled away hard onto that onside. There is protection out there. 2024, Kenner, seems to be the year for a comeback from relative obscurity for cricketers. I think of, you know, um, Shamar Joseph from the West Indies. Well, he'd never, he'd never arrived, so he, he's... Uh, but, but coming out of total obscurity, new, uh, <laughs> so to speak. Um, a totally new face. There was also oh, a Joseph, Pakistan yeah. player whose name slips in my mind. He was an Uber driver the last time Pakistan toured <laughs> Australia. And that'll be wide. I think what it does is it gives hope to two cricketers around the world that Yes, you may be in the wilderness. You may feel like no one uh, is aware of, of what you're doing as this, this wide brings up the 50 runs. It gives players hope, Ken, and it maybe gives a bit of a resurgence to bringing in those players from the club levels, as was the case for many years. Bavuma dances down the wicket and just dabs this out into the offside for the single. It was a fairly common occurrence a couple of years, well, no, a couple of years ago in times gone by, Ken, where a player would be plucked from club cricket. Happens Not very, very seldom these days. Uh, yeah, I mean, the gap between professional cricket and club cricket is now so big. What with academies and clubs and colts and all the rest of it, players generally get contracted straight out of school these days. Straight on the pads there from Funadison. They'll set off for the first. They're going to scream back for the second. And they'll be happy with that. And that's exactly what they'll need is to turn those little dabs and dinks into the off and on side into more than they would presumably get. How much do you think the dew is playing a role here, Ken, at the back well, we end? Must, we must keep an eye on it. There's a lot of uh, ball wiping. Uh, we saw CSMetry, the spinner, just... Uh, failed to deliver a ball he went back to to wipe it pitched up from Kruger mistimed onto the onside and a scream to almost uh, be aware of the the fact that Neil van Heerden was a little bit lapsed on his journey out of the starting blocks there kept it down to one though but uh 
these are the two ideal batters for that type of game. They're both so good at just working the ball into gaps, both quick between the wickets. Uh, so I imagine for the next five overs or so, that's going to be their game. If, if something presents itself, of course they'll want to get the boundary, but they're going to be trying to get in uh, a lot of ones and a lot of twos. 120 more runs required to find victory. Short and butted away onto that onside. There is protection out there. And Swanepoel does the cleanup work. But as you see there, when he does do the fielding, Ken, he almost looks like it's a slip and slide from the garden when you were a child. Yeah, and he's wiping his hands. So there's definitely quite a lot of moisture out there, one imagines. And that'll be one of the reasons that the Lions won the toss and elected to bowl first. Also, if there had been rain, uh, you also want to know uh, exactly what you're chasing with the Duckworth Lewis Stern calculations. This one just guided down to third man. It nearly went horribly wrong for them against the Western Province side after a tremendous bowling performance. At the end of nine, it's 57 for two. It, it could so nearly have been horrendous for the Lions, having done all the hard work with the ball in hand. Yeah, they did very nearly make a, a mess of that. One has to credit Western Province, who were pretty much dead and buried and really came back into the game sensationally well. Uh, actually managing to tie that game and then Quena Mapaka, of course, delivering a super over win for the Lions, uh, announcing himself at this great stadium where I'm fairly confident he's going to become one of the legends. We can only hope for his career to flourish. CSMA to, to begin his third. He's gone for 12 in two, so very frugal. Short and hammered away onto that onside. It'll take one bounce into the boundary for four. Well, I said he was frugal, and Tampa Bavuma wants to prove me wrong. Well, it was just a fraction short, and Tampa Bavuma very quickly onto that and uh, picking his spot beyond a fine leg very well too. Wasn't going to miss out on that. Just whips it away onto that onside. There's not much protection out there. But they've now decided they're going to go with a deep backward square and a cow corner long on. So everybody barring fine leg out on the ring and they've changed mid wicket to come a lot squarer than he currently is. Much what the Lions did uh, for a lot of their innings. Uh, which then opens up the little ones and twos through mid wicket. Will of course be against the turn for the right handers. Both of these sides, Ken, will know that this is the game that could prove a turning point in this competition for both of them. Yes, it is only halfway, but once you get a bit of momentum, you could find yourself slowly moving away from the rest of the chasing pack. Certainly in terms of uh, sealing a place in the top two, yeah, that's important. I mean, the Warriors, six out of six so far, uh, they keep on winning pretty pretty soon. They're going to be guaranteed a home semi-final. The Lions will obviously want to win this game and just cut that 10-point lead a bit. So this one's just worked onto the onside. They're running hard, and they'll get the second at a bit of a nervous rate for DP World Lions fans. It wasn't a very friendly throw uh, to Bola Sumetu, who seems to have done himself a bit of an injury to his finger. And JP King out there thought the run out was on. Timber Bavuma enjoying his uh, time in the high felt, knowing that when you play at this altitude, Ken, it can be really difficult to run those twos. This one's just knocked square of the wicket on the offside. And they'll get through for one. He's had a bit of a lean run in the T20 competition, Temba Babuma. I think he's extremely hungry to make runs today because when I arrived uh, an hour before the game today, he was hard in the nets, batting. Um, he then came down and hit some balls on the outfield. And uh, even between innings, he was doing a lot of shadow uh, batting. This one is a no ball, swept fine. So 
just before that last delivery they brought up their 50 partnership did these two so now a free hit for Timba Voma a no ball from a front foot can from a spinner is it bordering on unforgivable a cardinal sin at least absolutely yeah very frustrating as if uh, Sumetri doesn't have enough to worry about with the do, he's now worrying about his uh, run up. And of course, the other thing the do will do is that it'll take away a bit of his turn. The ball is, is likely to skid on a bit more and, and you know, come nicely straight on to the bat. So long on, long off, cow corner, deep square. He goes to Bavuma, who just guides this to a backward point. He gets nothing for it. So. In the end, Sumetu had the last laugh. End of 10, 68 for 2. Bit of anti-climax to take us to the halfway stage. Timber realised it was a free hit. Yeah. Surely, you know, the ball's there. You just flay it as hard as you can. Uh, you know, you get an edge over short third man. Third man's up, you get four runs. You don't, you don't steer it along the ground. Absolutely. The ground. Absolutely. Well... Hoping to change the tide is Alfred Motua. As I said, he's uh, done his duty here in the high felt for the Momentum Multiply Titan. Spent some time at the Knights, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So, really got the full journey from <laughs> from one capital to the next, Ken. He, he is from uh, Pretoria country, uh, Haman Skral. whips this away onto the onside they'll get just the one for it good bit of fielding there changes the game and this is where this game is going to be won or lost Ken is those fine margins the effort in the field as long on comes into the ring and fine leg is dropped back those small margins were you able to build pressure for two or three deliveries instead of two or three overs as you would in longer format cricket? Motua to Bovoma. And this time swipe and he's got him! That's a great catch by Matthew Bretzka. Just completely mistimed from Bovoma. And a low catch has switched this game on its head once again. Yeah, Matthew Bretzka anticipated so well there uh, at the deepest middle. Picked it up very early. Uh, knew it was going to drop a little bit short, came sprinting in, and uh, an excellent catch by the Warriors captain. Timba Bavuma swashbuckling in that shot, and as you said, Bretzka knew exactly where the result was going to be. 105 more runs to win, but that's another wicket for the Duff of Ed Warriors. That brings Mitchell van Buren to the crease at 69 for three. Valuable middle order batsman for the DP World Lions. His highest score coming at this year's SA20 against the Pretoria Capitals for the Royals. Let's have a look at this one again, Ken. It's a short delivery, just set up really. Tamba Bavuma trying to play that forehand tennis stroke, if you will, but his head was already on the way to the leg side. It kind of it looks almost a bit sort of pre. Uh he decided that he was going to try and clear it over over the offside when uh, in fact he could have probably pulled that leg side to a better effect but batters do uh, do try and move around the crease try and put the bowlers off but uh, credit to Alfred Mato uh, Alfred Mato that's what you get from him he just bowls a pretty steady line in length uh, reliable Consistent weary balls. Short and pulled onto that onside. Immediately there's an effort to cut it off, but is parried by Patrick Kruger and wrong foots. Poor uh, Sinatemba Kreshile. It looked like a goalkeeper who was undone by a bit of fancy footwork there from a footballer. And it mean, meant a bit of t more time along the grass for the ball and 
as luck would have it, the man who picked up the loose ball was the spinner, Sia Sameta, and you could see he was a bit peeved by the ball getting even wetter. He's still got an over to bowl. It's just popped up onto the onside square of the wicket. There is protection out there in Nieland van Heerden. So the one for them. And with the fall of the wicket of Tema Bavuma, the mantle then is now on Rassi van Odissen to try and make sure that they are keeping tabs with the required run rate. 103 runs to win, but the required run rate now, Ken, crept up to 11. Some urgency required by the Lions. That's tickled off the pad and a fantastic take by Senator McClashile. Not easy when it takes that deflection through to the wicketkeeper. You kind of had to hang in the air, but to wait for it to, to get to him, the thigh pad taking the pace off the delivery. Just floated to him. Having a look at this one. Koshile so good with his feet to get down the leg side. And as you said, he looked like he was in limbo, so to speak, hovering in the air. Just dots this one down behind square on the offside. Sumetu picks it up and furiously dries it off, trying to remove any moisture that may be have, uh, may, may have been picked up so the end of 11 and it's 72 for 3 so uh, what Mitchell van Buren did there at the end of the overs what he just needs to keep doing for a while get himself in get Rusty van Anderson on strike uh, van Anderson is in now 25 of 26 and uh, it's going to be time for van Anderson to see if he can pick up a few boundaries Patrick Kruger will continue this time from the call it drive-in. He's got one over under his belt. And that one going for nine runs. So no real reckless scoring from the Lions. Uh, they've been kept very quiet by this Warriors bowling attack. And it's, it's a Warriors bowling side that just gets the job done. No need for fancy deliveries going in all different directions. They're a side that are just doing the basics right and it's been effective for them. They keep it simple and they do it very well. And uh, that's that's the key. And uh, especially out yeah, of the pitch with a bit of assistance for the bowlers. They've uh, done that very well. Bayer Swanepoel, as expected, uh, Threat with the new ball, picked up a couple of early wickets. Short pulled away onto that onside. There's a man out there, but it's going to be 10 rows deep. Bang, bang, six. Lovely put away by Mitchell van Buren. Yeah, if he gets a half checker, no reason why he shouldn't uh, target, target the boundary as well. Swatted that one away with great disdain. Bit of a wayward delivery there from Patrick Kruger. But a rare six here for the DP World Lions and a most welcome one. Brings them under 100 runs to win. That's such a mental hurdle that they've now overcome. 96 to win. It's a good follow up there from Patrick Kruger. Follow the short one up with a pitched up delivery. And just one for it. So seven from the over. They still need another four, Ken, to keep up with the required run rate. But they have three balls remaining. Not that Patrick Kruger will give them any freebies. Fine leg is dispensed with out onto the boundary. And third man comes into the ring. Strong leg side protection for uh, Rassi van der Rissen. He is strong on the leg side, it's understandable. Hammered away on the onside. Another one is clearing the ropes there for the DP World Lions. Well, there's the four that they needed, plus two more. <laughs> yeah, why wow, Patrick Kruger went short again, I'm not sure. 
Not a good move, and Rusty van der Dusen has punished him. Right. Could this be the big over that uh, really kickstarts the Lions' chase? Saying to Mitchell van Buren, anything you can do, youngster, I can do it as well. It wasn't better. It was uh, landed a little bit closer to the field than uh, van Buren's did. But the results on the scorecard is still the same, though, Correct. so he'll argue that uh, he's done enough. <laughs> Two balls now for Patrick Kruger to remedy this over. And that's hoofed away into the night sky. There's a man coming under it. Will he get there? And he won't. It'll go for six. Just looked for half a second like he might have an opportunity to take that one in the deep. But it sailed over the fence. Bit of fortune there for Rossi. It was a real steep play. He uh, got under it a bit too much. High up, and it was always going to come down just on or about that boundary. And uh, the fielder just couldn't haul that in. 19 from the over, Ken. One ball to come. And as you said, is this the over? Well, it looks like it could be a shift for the Lions. And a change in the field. Deep backwards square now for Rusty van der Dissen. Fine leg in the ring. And he's the only man in the ring on the onside. Last ball of the 12th. Slashed away wide of extra cover. He does collect it there. Does Nielan van Heerden. And that'll be the end of the 12th. So 20 from that over leaves the Lions at 92 for 3 off the 12. And needing 82 of the last eight overs with uh, wickets in hand. They'll back themselves to get that. They've uh, got a couple of big hitters to come in, Vian Mura and Ifan Jones. Bjorn Fortain, of course, is very handy with the bat as well. But uh, the key is that they've got the uh, the run chase maestro there, Rassi van der 38 not out, off 29 balls. And uh, he just knows how to pace these sort of situations perfectly. Just eight from his first over means the return of Nielan van Herden is orchestrated by his captain, Matthew Bretzka. He's going to be bowling from the golf course in. Van Edison retaining strike. Well, he will hope to look to retain strike here. First ball now to Van Edison. Pitched up and smashed away. He wasn't going to miss out on a half volley, Ken. What a glorious stroke. I think he might have felt he missed out a bit the last ball of the previous over. Try, tried to drive it to extra cover, but Van Heerden managed to get across as it wasn't as well timed. But that one was smoked. That was just lined up and thrashed uh, through extra cover. And the pressure now very much on the Warriors bowlers. Boundary off the first ball of the over. The previous over went for 20. And uh, let's see how they respond. 78 more runs to win. 96 for 3. Another one from Van Heerden. Tucked away onto the onside square of the wicket. There's protection out there. As the ball just skids away to the man down there in the deep. 77 from 46, Ken. By no means are they dead and buried, are the DP World Lions. But just a wicket here could prove crucial for the Dolphin Bed Warriors. Yeah, I think you'd almost say at the moment that the Lions are favourites uh, if they keep wickets in hand. It's, it's interesting, DLS par is 103, so they're just a little bit uh, one mighty blow behind that. Just hit that back into the surface, and that's a good reply from Neil and Van Heerden. Overpitched the first ball of the delivery, and over pitched first ball of the over rather and has now brought things back five from the first three deliveries he wants to make sure that he continues this trend that he's on of keeping these two quiet and he'll want to keep Mitch van Buren on strike as well it's always better to bowl to the new bowler the way onto the onside they're running hard for the first one and Fanny Dyson might find himself at sea 
But as you saw there, Kojila not getting a clean grab of that one. Fanadissan had to get his skates on. And he slipped uh, trying to get back on a bear part of the strip of the uh, square there. Oh, just managed to dive and get the mat back in time. They set off so quickly for the yeah. first one, but it was a good early call from... The pickup is what made it, that's the thing, whereas... Uh, when the Lions were fielding, too many of those weren't picked up cleanly and uh, the bats, batsmen were able to get through for the two. That time the pickup was super clean and the release was quick and bang on target as well. Excellent fielding by... Was it Alfie Mato up there? Two balls left in the 13th. As a whole, this has been a good over from Nielen van Heerden. This is chipped up into the onside. It's going to be a great over from him. He's picked up the vital wicket. A simple catch there for JP King. And Van Edison, so close to a milestone, has just thrown his wicket away there with a nothing shot. Well, 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 the key wicket. And again, trying to slap a back of an inch ball over the covers. And uh, it just maybe got a little bit bigger on him off the splice of the bat. Yeah, bottom of the bat, if anything, in fact. Turning in the hand as yeah. well. And he knew immediately, Ken, that he'd been undone. Another wicket falling. And a crucial one for the Dolphabet Warriors. Vian Mulder will come to the wicket, but Funadison is gone for 43. And that leaves the Lions at 98 for 4. They still require many 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 things to go right for them but as you said ken with the backing of, of wickets in hand just four down they would think that they would be the happier of the two sides another wicket ken may oh, you that, turn it on there yeah the dls has not punished them too badly just a couple of runs dls 106 now so they're eight behind whereas they were six behind earlier in the over but uh, they've lost their guide, the, the guy who knows the way to the top of the mountain, if you like. But uh, Vian Mulder, he's been in wonderful form with the bat this summer. And uh, Mitchell van Buren, very, very talented as well. So certainly uh, this match is still in the balance. And crucially, he's off, off the mark there very quickly. Vian Mulder having done well for the Durban's Super Giants in this year's edition of SA20 and maybe showing his batting stripes Ken because somebody who yes he's, he's good with the ball but arguably was thought about as a batting all-rounder when he first came around or am I misreading the, the understanding of yeah, his role in the team he's, he's sort of been considered a batting all-rounder maybe a bowling all-rounder at times but I, I think the big thing for him in terms of his 2020 batting is that he's managed to find a role for himself that he can he can he can come in you know a few wickets fall at the power play and he can nudge and noodle the ball around and uh, do that well but he's also capable of uh, scoring your 50 or 25 at the back end dead ball there Sumetu does like to rush the batsman I've noticed Timber Bavuma pulled out a one earlier uh, yeah, he's having a good laugh, seeing Samantha. He knows what he was up to. Spinner's always looking to find the next trick in the bag. <laughs> anyway, get a wicket. Squeezed out onto the offside. There's no run there. As Sumetu finally, Sumetu finally brings up the first ball of his final over. He's gone for 23. Probably the most expensive of the... Warriors bowlers this evening. Wicketless, surprisingly, Ken, thus well, far in, in the game. Not in terms of run rate. I mean, he's he's um, he's well on the way to another very tidy performance this season as the hundred comes up for the Lions or eighty-four balls. Just having a look at the field as a whole. Deep square, cow corner, long on. There's also a man out at long off and deep square on the offside. That's hoofed into the night sky. There's a man underneath it. Will he take it? He will. This is turning in 
to the game that the Lions wouldn't want and the Warriors would be desperate to turn this game on its head. It's exactly what the doctor would have ordered. The fourth wicket going. Van Buren is upset with himself and he should rightfully be just getting a start and then throwing it away, Ken. He's gone for 10, it's 100 for 4. Yeah, you've got to be watchful when, in the sort of dewy condition to the ball skinning on from the spinner. That's probably not short enough for that shot. And uh, a well judged catch. Brings Evan Jones to the wicket. The hero in that super over against the WSB Western Province side, but he's got a big job here ahead of him, Ken. With the two wickets falling as quickly as they have, it means that the Lions now are having to change the nature of the way that they have approached this chase. Well, also change the nature of the way they're used to doing things. If I'm doing this, used to coming in in the last two or three overs of an innings. Uh, he's now got to hang around and help Vian Mulder for the next few overs get close to that score. Well, finally, Sumetu gets his lucky number 13th wicket. Nearly an opportunity for Sumetu, but a bit of a crowd catch there, Ken, as that was punted into the wicket. Metu is still leading that wicket tally with 13 now in this year's CSA T20. Just lathers this one out to the long off fielder there and an error isn't punished by the DP World Lions. Dofferbed Warriors now feeling like they're right back in this game. Sumetu just again apologizing to umpire Kuma just to say to him I know I'm maybe guilty of trying to rush things a little bit cut away behind square there is protection there so no way through that gap and that's the end of 14 it's 101 for 5 and I'm going to make way for Gert Maloney thank you for your time Ken thank you David uh, Sia Sumetu completes his four overs, one for 25, another wonderful uh, effort by the spinner today and he's just picked up a key wicket. David Minsley mentioned that he's the leading wicket taker in the competition so far. He's also been the most economical bowler, so you can't ask for much more than that. Uh, Gert Maloney, 73 needed or 36. Which way do you think this is going to go? Oh, I think the wicket of Van der Dusen was the turning point, wasn't it? That was the man they were looking at. And him and Tema Bavuma just throwing it away. You see the scorecard there. He was on his way was Van der Dusen. 43 of 32. Tema Bavuma was getting going as well. And I think the wicket of Van der Dusen is, just leaves the lines on the back end of it. At the moment, the Warriors will be very, very happy. Absolutely. Van der Dusen was the guy to... Uh Play the Andili Mokokani innings, a little 70, not out, mm -hmm. get the Lions home. He has Neil and Van Heerden, that's a great delivery. That's he's, the best delivery he's bowled tonight. He's found a nice length there, just back of a length, bit of life there, bit of bounce, movement. Difficult ball to get early on in your innings for Ifan Jones. I'm very surprised that it didn't send uh, Vian Mulder out a bit earlier, maybe before Van Heerden. Just to get things going, have the three senior campaigners just batting around each other. What a delivery that was, just back of a length. This one firing into the pads again. Yeah, it'll just be a, a leg bar. Yeah, it's a good point, Kat. I do wonder if, you know, Vian Mulder, the, the man in great form this, this summer, uh, experienced cricketer now, perhaps, yeah, but uh, I suppose the flip side of that is that he's going to be very useful uh, at the back end now, the Lions will be hoping. One problem they have is that Mulder and Jones can't take too long mm -hmm. to uh, get in. Suddenly that required rate has jumped to 12.7. From here then, take his pace off a little bit of a fumble, they come back for two. Good running, well spotted. 
by uh, Ifan Jones. You can see the fielder just wiping his hands off. There's a lot of dew on the on the ground. It is getting very slippery and the ball is getting wet as well. And we saw that one big over of three sixes. One, one by uh, Van Heer and then two by Van der Dusen. That run rate dropped down to 10. And all of a sudden now a couple of wickets, dot balls. It's gone up to two balls or two runs to every ball. Oh, Ooh, just popped up. The odd delivery does seem to be sticking a bit in this mm. pitch. Testing times. 105 for 5 for the Lions. Two balls left in the 15th over. 69 to get off 32 balls. And uh, the Dionis par has is really leaving them behind now. They're 18 runs shy of that. Yeah, they're dreaded 69. Mm. Oh, going has he got short. All of it? Jones. Yes, he does. Into the dugouts. Too short and put away by Ifan Jones. Why, why, why? You bowled a beautiful ball. You saw exactly what length the ball hit the seam. Let the ball do the work. The short ball has not worked the entire match. It's been dispatched and they keep persisting with the short ball. Just hit back of a length. Let the ball do the work. It's another maximum for the Lions. And, uh, oh. Very much needed for the Lions, brings them to the Nelson. <laughs> yeah, this uh, might just be the spark that Ephraim Jones needs to get him going. He's obviously a, a very powerful hitter, scores very quickly when he's in the mood that's muscled to extra cover, but uh, good work. By uh, the field is just a single to end the over, so uh, 12 off the over. 12 for 5, the Lions. Another good over by the Lions if they can carry on like this, but they still need, I feel, that one over of 20 in the next over or two just to get them back on track, just to get that ratio from runs needed and balls left, just get that closer to one another because it is running away with it a little bit. So I think they just need that one over and it should be on the 15th between the 15th and 17th over they need that biggie so 62 needed off the last five overs it's definitely doable but uh, the concern for the lions is they are five wickets down as uh alfie Motois returns to the attack bowling to ifan jones on nine it's a good length and all jones can do is push that into the covers for one just keep it on that length that uh, five six meter mark is just caused all sorts of problems for all sorts of batters in the entire match and you mentioned it's getting sticky now as well with the dew on one or two balls will skid through one or two will actually dig into the deck so there is going to be two pace pitch for the next couple of overs use it to your advantage don't give them something to just free the arms at they do a bit of a change in field as the third man comes into the circle Ooh, there's some quite steep bounce from uh, Motois. Mulder gets the one. So for Mulder, the uh, boundary field is all in front of the wicket in a ring from uh, slightly backward square leg, mid wicket, long on, long off. And there's a man at deep point, and Ifa Jones will have the same field. I think for Jones, it's it's going to be a question of he's going to muscle it. He's going to try and go hard at it. Like we oh, saw. he skewed it up into the covers. Getting underneath it and taken. Oh, the Warriors are taking all their catches. That is surely going to make a difference as well tonight. Very well judged catch by uh, Bayer Swanepoel, I think it is. And uh, Evan Jones is out for 10. And that's exactly what I was talking about. He's going to go for it. He's going to muscle it. He's going to try and force it. And uh, he did so, losing his shape completely. So you just see that replay. Just that little bit of extra venom from this. From the end that Matua is bowling at. Almost a nine iron shot there. Getting the hip through and a very good catch. Almost a collision by the Warriors. 
think Jones saw a little bit of width there by Mutua and fancied hitting it straight back over his head. Mm. Uh, and just, I think, a little bit of movement away from the right-hander ended up being a thick outside edge that ballooned into the covers. And uh, all of a sudden, from 69 for two and a partnership on the go, and things looking quite good for the Lions, they have crashed to 114 for six. And all the momentum in the Dalphabet Warriors side at the moment. Four more wickets to get. And a big, big hill to climb for the Lions. It is 60 required from only 27 deliveries. Matua picking up another wicket. Oh, going at only 10 runs thus far. Yeah, the way Jones was shaping, I think he hit that back over the bowler mm -hmm. or slightly onside. But uh, Matua has taken a key wicket. It's uh, off the outside edge of the battery, third man in place now for the new batter. Huge arm. <laughs> yeah, from third man, just apologizing to Kushile as Pillay. I'll put the cannon away, he says. <laughs> He's been working out in the gym. Yeah, four Fortain. arms going well. <laughs> Fortain off the mark. So much now depends on uh, Vian Mulder. Very tidy bowling this by Alfie Motwa. There's not going to be two there. And what an over thus far. A wicket. And also only four runs conceded. And you've got to feel that this partnership has got to be the one that the Lions feel has got to take them home. From here, you go to the uh, more... The, no, don't call them tail enders anymore. The lower... Good uh, uh, batters. Well, C Cody Yusuf can bat a bit, but uh, Luto Sapamla and Tepo Mareki are, are tail enders. Mareki's got a couple of 50s in his career, though. Oh. Oh. Chipped, but uh, I think maybe a uh, bounce ball there. The way Matua is reacting, I think he feels that he, he missed one there. His hands was on hips, but a fantastic, fantastic over dealing in the ones. Only the singles coming from it and the big wicket as well. Superb by Alfie Matai. Three overs, two for 13 he's got now. Uh, and uh, what a fantastic over to bowl as the 16th over. I think oh. you're out with a leading edge that uh, burst through his hands. Never easy when you're in your follow through, especially when you're a a big tall man that follow through normally takes a couple of paces just to end up all of a sudden you see a ball coming at you as you see Patrick Kruger changing ends he did not have a good time <laughs> from uh, the caller drive end no he bowled a bit short and got uh, deposited three times over mid wicket but four overs left now uh, Mortua has got one Van Heerden has got one Swanepoel has got one so I uh, guess this is the fourth over uh, out of that ration left for the Warriors. So uh, Kruger will have to bowl a third. He's the sort of guy who can't come back well though. Oh. Nicely played by Bjorn Fortain. Shimmy down the wicket and hits straight back over the bowler's head for four. Fantastic shot. Just shows you the intent at the moment. They know it's all up to them. Between Fortain and Mulder, this is the partnership that's going to take them home. 53 required from 23 deliveries. Oh, they can hold nothing back. You mentioned earlier, it's they can't hang around. They've got to get going somewhere. And it's got to be one of these two overs. They can't leave themselves another 40 to get in the last two. So third man is moving to a deep backward point. Short third man comes into place and... Long off goes back just to maybe cover that previous shot. He's quite wide though. And uh, Fortain got that previous one very straight. But uh, you'll probably find Kruger's going to try and bowl wide offside, offside Yorkers now. There we go. Fortain steps across. It's a two. Long on. Just one. The plan was evident there. You nailed it on the head. Going wide, going full. 
going in between that fourth stump and wide line and Fortein seeing it trying to walk across and just whip it through but uh, nice and full for the Warriors it's actually an easy equation if they can give away once as much as they want it's it's no, no hair of their skin but for the Lions they need boundaries they need the ball to go over the fence a couple of times absolutely if Kui can keep it full outside the old stump uh, it's going to take a very good shot to get it wide of long on for a boundary that uh, is squirted out square and a bit of teamwork by the Warriors on the boundary we'll keep it to two great effort there by Neil and Van Heerden and then great work on the fence as well doing a bit of a, a diving pass to his partner we mentioned earlier that it's almost rugby season <laughs> it's almost the end of rugby season <laughs> yeah, well it's a winter sport and then the start the start of another rugby season yeah the local one oh full toss but he has not found the gap He's uh, found Kyle Corner a couple of bounces going back for two. Well run by uh, Bjorn Fortein. Big dive put in. And th those normally hurt because it's he it dove on the uh, pitch right next to the one that they're playing at. It's in those foot marks. You can see not a lot of grass coverage there. <laughs> and uh, the way he fell, you can just uh, hear that his voice might uh, go up an octave or two. So 20 balls left, 48 runs to win. Smashed straight down the ground by Mulder. Long off is doing great work. Very well fielded by the skipper Matthew Bietzka. And uh, saving the boundary, keeping it to just two. So nine off the over, oh, excuse me, 11 off the over. That's uh, what the Lions need a big finish to this over a boundary would want. Yeah. That's what they would want. You can just see Kruger just looking at his hand there. That left hand just got in the way there because that was absolutely smashed. That was going to the fence. That little touch of the finger just slowed it down enough for Bretzka to come around the fence and just cut it off. Full toss again. Low though, difficult to dig out. And it'll just be one through deep mid-wicket to end the over so 129 for six three overs left and the Lions have got 45 runs still required to win this match I said it earlier it's got to be between overs 15 and 17 it's now over 18 this has got to be the over that they target for a big if they can get 20 even at 22 runs from this over, it will just give them a bit of a kickstart, just give them a momentum shift and put the Warriors back under pressure. Because at the moment, they can just give away ones, a twos, no problem, because they got a score at 15 to the over in the next three overs. Yeah, even if they score, say, 22 off this over, that'll leave uh, 23 needed off the last two. And you wouldn't want much more than that. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, now when everyone feels for the Lions, they need a very big over here. And it's uh, Neil and Van Heerden, who's going to be in the firing line. He's three overs so far, of course, 26 runs. You can hear the band fired up, trying to inspire the Lions batters. Full Yorker again, outside off, and again, it's uh, just a single good bowling by Van Heerden. Not much you can do with that. The bowling of uh, the Warriors has been fantastic. They've only given away five extras in the innings thus far, which is a big contradiction to what the Lions did in their first five overs. <laughs> Basically gave away five or six wides. We've seen no free hits in this match thus far. Yes, there was one. No. Timber Bavuma steered it to short third man. Oh, very good by Van Heerden and uh, Jorn Fortein wants the wide, but he did, <laughs> he did step out there a bit. He's now saying, must I stand out here? Umpire, Babs Kuma, who's telling him to get back to his normal place. That was a very interesting conversation, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Fortein begging for the wide, they want that extra ball and the extra run. Excellent bowling. He might have got away with one a little bit there, though. 
Fultain didn't move across quite as much and uh, it was maybe just outside the red line. Fultain uh, perhaps should just watch himself a bit here yeah, with his antics. Empire, just uh, explain to him that I can see the red line. It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty clear. Ball was good. And now he does go and stand there and chips this out to long on for just a single. It is such an effective line, this, if you can execute it properly. That's uh, a thing. Enthusiasm is one thing, but I said it earlier, you can do nothing without discipline. And this is disciplined bowling by Van Yerden. Great skill. I, I think it approaches there where we, we first saw Dwayne Pretorius do it mm -hmm. uh, to great effect. Mixing it in with cutters and slower balls, all these wide Yorkers outside all stuff. For the length that time, Moore just swings furiously. They're coming back for two. Here comes the throw to the wicket keeper's end and they're safely home. And so. at the moment I feel one ball left in the over. Oh, still 41 required. 40 in the last two, even if they get a single here. Oh, it's going to be take a Superman <laughs> effort from one of these two to get them over the line. Absolutely. You, you might be able to get 20 plus off one over, but to do it back to back overs at the death, uh, that's a really, really big ask. And, and also uh, remembering that Swanepoel will bowl one of those overs. Yep. Full toss hit high and handsome by Vian Mulder. And uh, he just strolls back down the pitch. He knows it's gone all the way past the, uh, the groundsman's roller there. That was a massive hit. Just what the Lions needed to end the 18th over. It's 139 for six, and they still need 35 of 12 balls. And now it becomes a difficult task because even that six didn't make a dent into the runs required. The 19th over, the penultimate over. It's going to be bowled by Alfred Matua, who's bowled well. Bowled two, three overs for only 13 runs. He's picked up two wickets. And then Bayer Swanepoel will no doubt bowl the last over. He's bowled superbly, Motua, and uh, But the one thing about him, that uh, strength, which is sometimes be a bit of a weakness, is that the Lions do know where he's going to bowl it. There. And Fortane has got it straight up. Kishiri is running after it. He's not going to get there. Oh, he sold his fielder down the drain a bit there. Kishiri was sprinting after it, but uh, could not make it. And then... Bailed at the last minute. Yeah, it looks like JP King just uh, let that one slip out of the hands. It is very wet. Well, I have sympathy for King there because he would have mm -hmm. had the keeper running at him. Uh, it was keeper's catch for a long time. You see Krishila going immediately. He's caught for it. He's caught. King is there. And then Krishila oh. bows out the swing away on the side. Big massive hit over the players' dugout. Six runs. And that man with the white shirt has just dropped a couple of bucks. About 20,000 rand he just dropped there. Big shot swinging across the line. Matua just bowling length and uh, oh, that was absolutely thumped. Yeah, super strike by uh, Vian Mulder. He's gone to 29 off uh, 16 deliveries. Four balls left in the over. Big four balls coming up. 28 needed by the Lions of 10 balls. Gain. Back of the Mulder. Swatted this superbly. Way back, way back towards the players' tunnel. Fantastic. And this is the problem, perhaps with Alfie Mottur, is that he's just can bowl a fairly set line in length uh, that you can line him up a bit. And that's what Vian Mulder is doing. To create effect at the moment as the Lions go past 150. Fantastic striking by Vian Mulder. That went back a long way. That was a super strike and it's a half a dozen to his name. And he is shot up all of a sudden. This, uh, oh, 152. 22 now required from 9. 
Hey, two more of those lusty blows brings it to 10 from the last six. We might have a game on our hands. Another super over. You've been a bit of a jinx. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's uh, a time for the Warriors to reflect because uh, if this over carries on like this, then uh, it could really turn out badly for them. 22 off nine, the game is back on a bit of a knife edge. The Lions are back in this. Thanks to back-to-back -back sixes by Vian Mulder. Power down the ground. Matua going fuller. The Fulton's going to race back for two. He's quick. Yeah, I guess Fulton, uh, Matua rather, kind of had to go full there, having been pulled twice for sixes. Yeah, the first one was a pull, the second one was just Vian Mulder just picking it up and absolutely swatting it. So he's got no choice, go full, go straight, he's got protection on long on, long off at defence. Hit hard, down towards long off, the fielder can only watch it, sail over his head. Third, six of the over for Vian Mulder. He's moved to 43 of 19 deliveries. 14 required from seven. Oh, is the man back? Is the man back for another super over? <laughs> well, the right, uh, Vian Mord is going. Uh, does he take a single now off this last ball of the over? Or uh, <laughs> does he swing for the rafters and back Bjorn Fortain to get a single off pass? Wonderful. I'll tell you what, if you yeah, actually yeah, look at it, another boundary here will take them to 10 in the last. And now even 14 the last, it's definitely doable. Yeah. And now a big uh, consultation, a big conference between the Chile, Captain Mirzka and the bowler Motwa. He's gone for 21 in this penultimate over. One ball left to bowl. 14 needed or seven. From nearly picking up a wicket in his first delivery back to going after that, going for Bang, six, six, two, six, and all with the compliments of the Mulder. Yeah, what a costly job that now looks like being. Very wide and caught oh. wide. You can just hear the Lions supporters getting behind their team now. The pressure has all of a sudden shifted. You can just feel that pressure shifted all the way to the Dalphabet Warriors. It's going to be a, oh, this is a big delivery. Big ball here for Matua. Pity the poor bowler. 13 or 7 needed. Over pitch. Punch down the ground. Long on could be in business now. Running in. That's a key guy. He's got it. Taken. Matua has the last laugh. I think that's more a sigh of relief than it was a laugh, to be very honest. He picked it up. And it's the huge, massive wicket of Vian Mulder, who was the man who was putting them back into this match. He's gone for 43 of 19 deliveries, fantastic batting. And has he done enough? Has he done enough to get the, the Lions back into this contest against the Warriors? Well, 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 Matua just uh, maybe a bit of pace off there, floating it up nice and full. And uh, Mulder just couldn't get good enough contact to clear long on. Wow. What an end to the penultimate over. So, the Lions need 13 off the last over to win this match. Cody Yusuf, who uh, can bat a bit, but uh, I don't think he's been in too many situations like this. And uh, Bjorn Fortain, of course, is very handy with the batter and a man who's shown great BMT in the past. Uh, he made a fabulous unmeaning half century uh, two or four years ago to win the one-day cup for the Lions against the Titans at uh, Supersport Park when Riza Hendricks made a, a massive hundred. And there's just the replay of the wicket again. Safe as houses. Patrick Kruger under that. Bayes Swanepoel to bowl the final over. It is going to be a a nice edge again. You've got to feel with that wicket, the momentum has shifted back to the Warriors. The Duffelbed Warriors will be very happy to the back of Ian Mulder. 
So the field is uh, third man and five leg are both nominally in the ring outside at the moment they walk in there's a man at cow corner there's a long on a long off and a deep cover as a uh, bear swanapur will bowl to bjorn fortain 13 runs needed of these last six balls it's going to be full it's going to be straight there's an asking to climb onto that front foot and we saw a bit of extravagant bounce from this end it's it on the four wide of the long off. There could be two here. They've got to come back for two. <laughs> Cody Yusuf might have been in trouble if it had been a direct hit. He took a bit of a circuitous route to get back. But two to start the over. 11 or five needed. One of the next two deliveries has to go to the fence. You don't want him in a situation where you need 10 off two. One of these has to go. Get that required rate to under 10. Steps outside off and hits this again. Hard to log off this time. It'll just be one. There's no way they get two out of that. So Cody Yusuf on strike with 10 needed or four balls. It's only in his 15th innings at the moment. All the pressure is on the young man. We know he's got a lot of grit with the ball in hand, but now he's got to face Bayer Swanepoel, who's a very wily bowler. You can just see Brietzka tapping him on the shoulder there and said, job well done thus far. Four to go. Four to go. Ten runs required. Oh, one has got to sail over. Take us to another super over. <laughs> well, Cody Yusuf, at the very least, has to get bad on balling at one here. Uh, anything more than that will be a, a bonus for the Lions. Must get one. No, swing and a miss, and they think they're running the bye. What a cool customer is Bayer Swanepoel. Just executing the plans to perfection. Him and Brietz had a long conversation on just exactly what angles they want, where the field should be. And that's exactly where he's bowling. It's that disciplined bowling. You can just see him coming in, just hitting that length, and just straightening it up from the, ref, from the right hander. And uh, Bjorn Fortain had a, a wander down the pitch to chat to Yusuf, I'm sure, just to remind him of the importance. Just make contact. Slower ball, but uh, well adjusted by Yusuf. He's got a single to point. So, nine needed off two balls. So, uh, we need a six at least. Okay, two fours, two fours, we're on even par. Two fours will be a super over, yeah. But uh, to win it, the Lions will need a six. For the Warriors, all they want is a single or a dot, yeah. Even a two will be fine for them. Stop the boundaries for the Lions. Let's clear the fence. Feel the same. Hits hard, hits hard and well, it could be four, it is. Or is it even a six? No, I think just a four. One bounce over the extra cover boundary. It had to come, it had to come. Fortain just opening the face a little bit more than the previous shots. And he's just clearing it. One bounce into that lovely strike. And now, oh, just feel the tension, feel the crowd. Even the band has gone quiet. <laughs> yeah, too much though, tension. Yeah, yeah. So it was a super shot uh, by Bjorn Fortain. Let's not forget that. Wonderful strike. Picking the gap through extra cover, beating long off. Uh, just see if the Warriors are making a bit of an adjustment. Yeah, cover covers come a little bit closer to uh, the extra cover fence rather than being square. And uh, Captain Beard's going in conversation with his bowler, Bayer Swanepoel. He's been so good tonight. Two big wickets up front. Now he just needs to make sure he doesn't get into six. And uh, the Warriors will surely win this game. And I think that last delivery was just a little bit wider than he wanted to bowl it. Just gave Fort Saint the opportunity to free his arms, hit through the line, and this is the big ball. So four will be a super over. Straight down the ground. I don't think he's got enough on it. Long 
on, comes across. They're running a second, and uh, the stumps are broken. So the Warriors have won by one run. Uh, I make it. Oh, or is it two? It's probably two runs. In fact, one seventy-one. Fantastic sure. stuff by Bayer Swanepoel executing his plans to perfection. What a game again! I said earlier it's going to be an absolute banger, and it was. Fitting of the uh, top of the table clash, and the Warriors maintain their unbeaten record. Seven from seven from them, and you could just see tonight, Chet uh, Maloney, why they are unbeaten. Just simple, disciplined, superbly executed cricket. And all, everything done in the field, there was one or two mishaps from their side as well, but the Lions, how they rude those drop catches, Mohakane making them pay, scoring a 70. Oh, it is back to the drawing board for the Lions. This is the third loss in their campaign. And as you mentioned, Alphabet Warriors, unbeaten Warriors at the moment. And now that now takes their lead on the top of the log to a whopping 14 points. Uh, so the, they are certainly the early favourites to finish top of the log. Halfway mark, they're 14 clear. And uh, just a wonderful performance by them. Their, their bowlers did a great job tonight. Swanepoel, 2 for 27 in his four overs. Alfie Motua bowled really well until the last over he delivered. Uh, where he took a bit of tap, but he still finished with 3 for 35. And they were key wickets. And that man, left arm spinner, Sia Sametu again. Four overs, one for 25. Excellent once again. And it was good bowling by uh, Bjorn Fortain as well. Only going for the 28. Bjorn Mulder, 28. But the wickets, they picked up two early wickets. And then that big partnership between uh, Mohakane and Herman really set it up for Trishile in the end to come with a bit of a 22 or 14 run burst. Yeah, the Lions, are, I think, will feel that they lost this game in the field uh, with their ground fielding in particular. Uh, apart from the three catches uh, Mokokani offered, uh, there were also numerous ones that were turned into twos, just bobbles in the outfield. Uh, the Warriors were more secure in their fielding and in a game of fine margins like that, just two runs, that made the world of difference. No, oh, fantastic, fantastic. Game. And thank you again for everyone for watching. Thank you for the production team. You guys have been fantastic. Mr. Borland, always a pleasure to have you on the comms. David Mitchell, thank you very much. It was fantastic working with you all. It's been a fantastic evening. We had a bit of a fright of rain, but the clouds subdued. And uh, from myself, Kurt Maloney, thank you very much for joining us. I'm going to give the very last word to the legend. That is Ken Boland. Well, do join us uh, at the weekend for uh, the remaining games. Uh, it's a busy weekend, of course. It's the Easter weekend here in South Africa. And uh, on the 31st of March, so that'll be Sunday, we've uh, got Western Province playing these self-same Warriors. What a big game that will be. And the Lions travel to Paul to take on the Rocks. So, and then the next day on Monday, there are another two games, Tuskers versus Dolphins and Dragons versus Titans. So, you know where to find us on Pitch Vision or the uh, CSA YouTube channel or Super Sports YouTube channels. So, uh, do join us again. Thanks very much for joining us this evening. A very good night. <laughs>